Hello, hello. Hey, Nugs. Um, I'm currently getting everything ready. Oh, God. So many people joined the Discord, actually. I just saw that. A bunch of people joined the Discord because they saw the video. Aw, oh, damn. Wait, no. <laughs> the Discord is a wasteland. <laughs> There's nothing in there. Um. Damn. Let's, um... No, wrong button. At. Okay. Um, hello, hello. What's the definition of golem? Well, we'll be talking about that. Stone thing. Golem dies... Well, hello, and welcome to all you uh, wonderful people who have joined the stream. I haven't streamed in a while. <laughs> this this is... I, I, I have to get used to this again. Uh, because I don't normally talk while I draw, and I don't normally draw while I talk. Which means... They don't normally mix. It's either I talk a lot and no drawing happens, or the opposite. But yeah, hello. According to Google, golems came from Hebrew origin, meaning shapeless mass. Well, these masses are going to have quite a bit of shape to them. Uh, but hello, everyone. So, I have readied a canvas uh, with the word golem on top of it. That is as much preparation... That That is all the preparation I did. But yeah. So, the goal of this stream, and everybody in the uh, chat, we're going to be designing golems. So, the dwarves, um, the video I posted and also the stuff on Twitter, they, um, they created golems, right? And I have had my try at designing these golems before, but it didn't go so well, right? I But I've developed the lore behind them a little more, and now I feel it's a good time to go into it, because it is both developing the lore around the, um, the dwarves more, but also around the golem. Uh, no, and also around the magic system, because the magic system is intertwined with the golems and how they work. Uh, let me read this chat. Are you going to be talking, taking more inspiration from the original Jew folklore, uh, golems, or the recent, er, uh, renditions of golems in media? Uh, imagine making a golem, but it's just bunches of, bunch of lemmings gathered together. <laughs> ah, wonderful. Um, we will be taking as much inspiration as we can. I love going back into the history of... Uh, classic fantasy creatures and tropes and trying to see where they all came from, right? But I do have a general idea of where we have to go with it, right? Because the magic system works in a particular way when it comes to animating, reanimating things. Um, so we have to follow the rules of the magic system, but outside of that, the actual design of the thing itself is very flexible. I have no idea where we should go with it, but... Let me explain what goes on with creating a golem so we can know what the limitations are. Okay, so in the magic system, the way you make something move or make an inanimate object um, have magical properties, it's by writing glyphs on them, right? Writing runes and glyphs, um, which are called ifs. 
yes, I'm just being quirky by giving it a new name instead of just calling it glyphs. I wanted to call it ifs because I'm, because, you know, like programming language uses like the, the, oh, if this, then that, but it's, but it's glyphs. So it's combined together. It's ifs, you know, yeah. uh, anyway, I know it's horrible, but okay. The golems use something called ifs, which are like magically written code. Um, if mana gets sent through it, it does the thing that the code is told to do. Um, so normally you can do it on scrolls. That's how scrolls work as well. They have ifs written on the scrolls, which is the easiest way to write ifs because it's on paper, right? And you write with a pen. Uh, but the thing is, they're one use. You you put mana through it, and it destroys the paper. So the way golems work, and magical items, is they are ifs embossed on metal scrolls, like very thin metal scrolls that are rolled around a, a core center and have mana sent through them. And because they're more sturdy, they can withstand you know mana being put through them and recasting the spell that they're told to do over and over again but they're a lot harder to make because well they're made out of metal and you have to fucking um engrave the the thing instead of just writing it on paper yo how is my favorite quirky femboy boyfriend excuse me <laughs> uh thank you very much for the uh subscribe Italia Keeper. But yeah, excuse me, uh, Handicap. Uh, I, I don't know if you're talking to me, but sure, I will take the role of your femboy boyfriend, and I am doing great. How is everyone else doing, by the way, in the chat? How is everyone else doing? Oh, hell yeah, just saw your prior update about the dwarves. Very happy to be here. Oh, thank you, um, Italia Keeper. I appreciate that. I was just watching your magic, and stranger video and the stranger's design felt very reminiscent of characters from Darkwood. I love it. Yes, I took a lot of inspiration from that game. Very keen eye. Uh, Peel Crusher. Uh, hold on. Thank you for the subscription. Gulhermi Sampaio de... I'm sorry. I can't read that properly and I probably butchered your name to hell, but um, thank you. Thank you for the subscription. But yeah, very keen eye. Um, I did take a lot of inspiration from uh, Darkwood. Uh, around that time where I designed that character, a lot of the other characters, like for example the um, uh, the Witch Hunter as well, was also inspired by Darkwood because I really like that game. I just like the atmosphere and the, the character designs when you talk to them. That sort of really dirty, grimy um, aesthetic is just, mwah, it's just beautiful. What happens if, say, mana is imbued directly within the material? Well. Uh, mana... Okay, this is the thing. The mana... I, I have a whole magic system, right? But I'm having trouble illustrating it or explaining it in a simple way without just sitting you guys down and having a conversation with you about it, you know? Like, I wished I could just elegantly make a few pages that wonderfully flow and describe the magic system very nicely, point by point, and at the end of it, you're good and you just get it. But... I, I don't know how to write like that. That is such a hard thing to just do. But, okay. Um, mana is just in the air, right? It, it comes from the inside of the earth. People still wonder where it comes from, but... Where does... Oh, I just answered that question. There you go. Uh, it comes from the inside of the earth. There are whole religions based around um, where the mana come from and the pursuit of finding out the truth about where mana comes from. Sorry. My, I'm a bit stuffy. Uh, there are these... There's a religion called the Centrists, who are people that create churches uh, above these giant fissures in the ground where mana, like, spews out uh, the most aggressively. And they make these giant gondolas that go downwards that are, like, giant magical drills to try and drill to the center of the earth to figure out where the fuck mana comes from. Right? But... So mana comes from the inside of the earth, and it just sort of flies around. And there's a thing called mana saturation, which is the amount of mana a given material can hold before it fails, 
right? Every material can hold mana in it, but every material has a different limit to how much mana it can hold before it cracks or crumbles or breaks or falls apart. Um, so, so what happens if mana is imbued directly within a material? It depends. Some objects change with the amount of mana saturation that is within them. Water, for example, changes viscosity, viscosity and hue quite a little bit, right? If it goes close to the max saturation that is able to be kept in water, it starts turning purplish and red, and the viscosity turns more like honey. Um, in other materials, it might make them more brittle or hard. Um, but, yeah, that that's what happens. Um, just found your channel about 15 minutes ago on Redesigning the Dwarves. Great video. Love the theme you gave them. Thank you very much. Um, Primaris. Uh, I think mana deserves its ambiguity, its mystery, and uh, esoteric. Can it take physical form from saying a gas to a fluid? Feel very similar to Hollow Knight. Uh, I don't know if if changes, but what does mana look like? Color, texture, stuff like that. <clears throat> so uh, mana is invisible. It's a form of energy, like electricity. You, well, actually, I'm dumb when it comes to like physics shit, so I don't even know if there's there's probably. Well, yes, you can see electricity, fucking lightning, or whatever. But it, it's invisible, right? It's in the air, and it it can't be, like, turned into a solid or liquid. Um, what, what was I going to ask? Answer? Hold on. I, I'm, I'm losing track. There's too many messages. Uh, I don't know if... Wait, can it take physical... Okay. Right, the, the ambiguity of magic. The thing is... Um, the way I designed the magic system was, yes, it is an ambiguous system where creatures outside of humans use it in mysterious ways. Like, there are, um, uh, dragons, which we haven't gotten into at all yet, and, and fantasy creatures that use magic in their own strange ways. They have, um, developed biologically to take it in and use it to cast their types of spells, fire breath, uh, lightning, stuff like that, which we don't really understand yet. But um, within the borders of, of what the humans in the world try to learn about magic, they do it in a very scientific way, right? Because I was expecting if magic were to be an actual thing, right? If magic was a thing in the world, then humans would try to understand it as best as possible and basically make a science out of it, right? So that's how... I'm developing the magic system from the human perspective of things. They can control it as much as they understand, and they try to understand the hell out of it. And one of the things that I've done with it, which is, which was... Hold on, my... By the way, all of you would might be realizing, I'm bad at talking. Uh, I it, The videos have scripts, and I read them, because I'm not good at just talking normally. So, sorry if that is, like, uh, breaks the illusion of, like, this guy can't even communicate. I'm sorry, but this is how I am. I can't talk that good, but I'm trying my best. Um, words are hard, yes. What was I going to say? They have quantified mana. Like, one of the main things that I wanted to do with the magic system, outside of the weird metamorphosis and the people turning into uh, monsters, uh, weird bendy versions of humans, is that they quantified mana. What has always bothered me in systems is, like, we always throw around these words in games like mana, energy, and stuff like that. And there's always like, oh, this spell uses 20 mana, this spell uses 30 mana the fuck's a mana? What is one mana? Who defined it? What is it? How much is one mana? You know? Like, all the... They, they all have numbers, but nobody tells me what one number is. What can I do with one mana? How much is it? You know? And I feel like that would be one of the first things that humans try to figure out if mana was a thing. They would want to know what one mana is, so they can actually do calculations and try to figure out things about the world. Uh, about magic. So... The world has a calculation for what mana is. Mana is a unit of measurement. Um, one mana is 
the maximum saturation of a liter of distilled water at sea level. Basically, if you have a distilled, a liter of distilled water, right, no contaminants, no nothing, have it at sea level, and you put mana into it, at the point it flash boils, so the max saturation, okay, hold on. When water reaches max saturation, it flash boils. It just releases everything at once and just evaporates into the air instantly, into gas, right? So if you put enough mana into one liter of distilled water at sea level to turn it into gas immediately, that's one mana. So so now we know what one mana is. You can that will not change. That will not, you know, be be a different in the future or whatever. That is a quantifiable way to just know what one mana is. And now we can also use that calculation to calculate how much mana can be in a mana potion, for example, right? Um, I have this calculation somewhere, actually. Sorry. See, I told you this stream is just going to be about talking, and it's not even about uh, drawing. But let me let me tell you about this. Um, Sam, you literally just found the channel, binged most of the videos, then you wind up live. Wow. I just wrote finals on physics, and what you're talking about is heat. Just not heat. Yes. Uh, are you going to take inspiration from Jewish golems or more modern themes? Um, it's, it's, we're gonna go look back into the history of golems and see what we get from it. Uh, when we design the golems we have. So, look, have gravity is like, what? So, like, have gravity is like ripples in the fabric of the universe and vice versa? Words are hard. No, 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 no. A uh, slinky human. I understand as a writer, good with pen and paper, bad with words. They hurt my brain. You speak great, bro. It's a steam stream. No one expects you to talk like a scholar with a prepared script. Fair enough. Thank you. One mana equals one face to play. Like, how you thought about giving mana energy into jolts per volume? I have not. That's the, the part that I've um, had trouble with, is is I can calculate mana with mana. Like, I can find its own value, but I'm, I'm having trouble, like, quantifying it with existing measurements of, of energy. Okay, where is this? Sorry, I'm currently looking for... Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so mana is more or less is fundamental component of your project universe. So like space, time, mass, and energy IRL. Yes, I think so. It's captivating watching how passionate you get explaining this world you've built. Thank you. Um, if you flash boil, you can calculate the power of mana. I, I guess you can, though I don't know what those calculations would be. Um, this man said jolts. The, the physicist in me just died. Jolts. Jolts. <laughs> Is it joules? I think it's joules, right? If you want to find a measurement for mana, you need to find a constant value of it. Could be based on mana value in certain types of, uh, creatures, that is constant throughout its lifespan are there people who are able to trade mana like harness it uh, for themselves or enhance others with it um you can enhance yourself with it uh mages so so mana is affected by thoughts and and intention right if you if you want to cast a fireball you have to understand 
fire and and it's it's minute details you have to literally feel the thing you're intending to do that's why it takes so much training and so much like trying to figure it out to cast just a fireball or something but you can also instead of like casting spells outside of your body and stuff like that some mages are versed in using mana to enhance their own body in trying to focus on their physical being their muscles their their uh, tendons and it makes them faster stronger uh jump higher whatever you know that kind of stuff so there are mages that are like basically just physical fighters that just beat the shit out of you at light speed <laughs> because they've just imbued themselves with mana and like you could picture their bodies being like riddled with these runes and tattoos scribed all over their really just perfectly built buff physiques they would probably they, they would basically be like those those ancient philosophers you know just very wise but also buff as shit and ready to beat the shit out of you if you think mana is energy trading would be in another form uh i i don't know what that means uh, hi, I just saw your dwarf design video, and I'm totally new uh, to your content. I was blown away by your creativity and saw that you were live on YouTube. Uh, tell you what, I'm utterly impressed. Oh, thank you, uh, Nicholas Needham. Uh, Cooper, from how you describe mana interacting with water, uh, inserting mana into water makes it want to clump up more, uh, getting more viscous until the mana... Um, maximum is reached and then water pops am i right uh do different races have different capacity of using mana so uh cooper it's it's like i i have an idea of how it works but like i don't know if there's actually like a scientific way to explain it you know like i wish there was and i wish i had more brain to be able to explain it that way but i just had the idea that Whatever it is, a material, if you put too much mana into it and everything has its own limit, it just crumbles and it can't take that amount of mana anymore, right? So I don't know how to put that into more rigid terms, but that's just the way I've always thought of it. Um, but people use that to their advantage as well, right? They're, the way you ingest mana in the world is not through your mouth or stuff like that they're inputs right uh hold on, let me just let me just pull up the the page so i can show you and talk about it at the same time My folder is a mess. Where's the mage page? Ah, there it is. Nope, that's the PNG. Okay, there you go. This guy, right? Uh, you could calculate the energy of a volume and mana per destructive power per volume, say 1m3, uh, could be equal to 1 ton of TNT, or you could, uh, to mass energy, conservation like nuclear fusion, fission. Like, people trade food. We make food and sells food, but we want food and things like energy sell energy sell food instead oh i mean yes you can put mana into mana potions it basically like heat with every element having a specific value where it melts or classifies in this case it just destroys itself and the heat is mana right but the thing with mana is if if a material reaches its maximum saturation with mana right it breaks but the mana doesn't get expended like that's what i how i wanted it to be is the mana doesn't get mana stays there until it gets affected by thought and intention 
and that's when it finally gets used up. It only gets used up when a creature takes it in and casts a spell with it, and it turns it into something else, like the spell, and that's when it gets used up. When an item or an object reaches max saturation, it doesn't use up the mana, it just breaks the item and releases all that mana. And, and so mana gets taken in through the body, through these inputs, right? They're, they're grafted to the body, or put into the body like this. There's these little ports um, that get a, uh, a needle put in, right? And that connects up to a funnel, which amplifies the amount of mana you can take in. Mana gets attracted by metal um, and different shapes as well. Oh my god, how am I gonna... Okay. Mana gets attracted by certain things. Like, it swarms around places, right? Um, mana comes from inside the earth, but it'll cluster around certain things. Uh, mostly things with geometrical shapes and also certain materials, like metals. So, a funnel shape, like an intersecting funnel like this made out of metal, would be the best sort of shape to allure ma mana, right? And then from that point on, they can just sort of take it into their body. So you don't, like, drink mana potions, because drinking mana potions wouldn't work. The way you do it is... So, okay. A liter of distilled water can hold one mana, which isn't much at, at sea level, right? But you can dilute the water. No, you can, you can contaminate the water with, let's say, salt to increase the amount of mana saturation that it can hold before it evaporates into the air. So what people do is they gradually add salt to the water and add mana into it to keep it close to the limit of mana saturation, but the water would have... Okay, hold on. I, I have this written thing here. I'll just read it out. Um, to make a mana potion with pure water... Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, a mana is a unit of measurement. Uh, one mana is the amount of energy a liter of distilled water requires to flash boil um, at sea level. Uh, which means it would be awfully impractical to make mana potions with pure water because they would only be able to store less than one mana. That's why when people, uh, when potions are made, salt is added to increase the water's max saturation and allows it to hold more mana. Though the salt is added gradually as it also decreases the efficiency at which mana can be absorbed in the water, it basically makes it dif more difficult for the mage to like put mana into it, so they just gradually increase salt and mana at the same time so it like is the most efficient way to do it um though salt is is wait uh, da, da, da. uh gradually as it decreases the efficiency of which mana is absorbed into the water so it's a balancing act of adding mana just before the saturation max then adding salt to increase it again an average quantity of, or The grammar is wrong. Uh, anyway, an average quantity mana flask has 250 milliliters in it. So an average bottle of, of mana is 250 milliliter, which stores an average of 10 mana in it, which means the additional salt in the water increases the saturation max by 40 times. Uh, every liter of mana potion has 350 grams of salt added to it, which means 8.75 grams of salt added to a liter would increase the mana saturation of that leader by one. So, mana potions are salty as shit. They're really salty, so you can't drink them. You can take in mana through the stomach, by the way, but it's just mana potions are the best way to, to, to haul mana in a compact package, but you can't drink it because it's salty. Um, so what they do is mana potions are kept at a very close point to the mana saturation level of the water so it's near to the boiling point right and the top of a mana bottle would have a salt crystal in it that has an amount of mana in it and what you do is you pop the cork of the bottle which drops the salt crystal into the water dissolving it releasing the rest of the mana into the uh, potion which exceeds its max saturation causing it to flash boil which you know turns into steam releasing it into the air 
with the mana that was in the bottle, and then you take it in through your inputs that are on your body. Uh, could you make people... Yes. <laughs> yes, you could. It is not... Uh, the 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 taking in mana through inputs is a conscious thought, so you couldn't just throw mana potions at them to kill them. But if you are well worst, well worst. <laughs> so, um, there are different kinds of mages, and there are specific mages that teach themselves not to think. Right, the the mages that make mana potions have to not imbue any thought into the mana, otherwise it would get used in the form of spells. So they're very well versed at just expelling mana in its purest form without any waste. So you could just force mana into somebody and combust them if you exceed that person's max saturation, because a person has max saturation as well, because mana is stored in their blood. And blood has a max saturation per liter, right? So you could calculate how much mana a given person, depending on their size and amount of blood they have in their body, how much mana they could hold. And if you pumped more mana into them, they would just combust. So you can, you can kill somebody by giving them too much mana. Uh, and the problem is because like mana changes the property of, of liquids as well, it's really dangerous to get to like a high saturation level within your blood. So even though your body can hold a maximum of let's say like 120 mana, right? You shouldn't reach 120 mana because that's dangerous. There's this thing called, which I haven't touched on in the, in the um, uh, drawings I've made. There's this thing called uh, mana sickness, which is the symptoms that start occurring to when you start reaching the upper limits of mana saturation within the blood in your body, right? So as a mage, if you start taking in too much mana, you start feeling dizziness, headaches, um, and, you know, nausea, stuff like that, that indicate to you, hey, stop taking in mana. But more seasoned mages um, that have practiced just cycling mana through their body, which is just taking in mana and releasing it to get accustomed to that mana sickness, they have a higher limit because they can just, they've gotten used to that feeling of, of being close to the max saturation of the mana that can be in their body. There is a drug in the world that's called tar. You can see it's the thing that builds up in the veins of mages. So the thing is, when you keep casting spells often, it builds up this substance in your veins called tar. It's the sticky black stuff. And if you cast spells too often, it will just block your veins and kill you, right? So it's 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 the residue that's left over from spell casting. Um, but people have found out that you know a, a mage happened to die from this tar overdose, whatever the tar built up too much in them, and they died. And they figured out that you could scrape the tar out of a person's veins and distill it into this elixir that if if you ingest it as a mage um it's still called tar by the way the the thing in the veins is called tar and even if you distill it, it it's still called tar for ease of remembering um if you ingest it it prevents you from feeling the effects of mana sickness right and it makes you more focused to cast spells so it basically prevents that limiting factor that would take years and years to try and improve slowly and just skips that process and allows you to take in as much mana as you'd like without feeling mana sickness. But the problem is it's numbing, it's not preventing. So you would feel like you can keep casting, but suddenly you just drop dead because you know you, you reached the mana limit or you um, built up too much tar in your veins and you just died. Love when magic is stored in the blood and... Um, use it's gotta squirt the juice okay i'm sorry that i will m miss people's messages just because there are a bunch of them going by all at once but anyway let's stop the tangent for now um i've spent 36 minutes talking about something that is not on topic to what i was planning to do on the stream so let's let's continue on to what we actually wanted to do on the stream which is designing golems so if anyone has any input about 
um, like the origins of golems and where they came from. No, don't be sorry. It, it's also my own fault because I, I, I keep wanting to explain the things that I have in the world that I still haven't like made into uh, drawings. I've been following you in Twitter and haven't seen that you had a YouTube channel. You definitely inspire me to do more uh, cool world building art. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so. Are the grooves, etchings, and the metal sheets like mana channels? Um, ifs are like putting... So mana is affected by intent, right? Ifs is like putting the intent of the person writing it into a material. Right, so it requires it, it, it requires incredible focus to make an if, right? Because if you get distracted, whatever, while making it, it's ruined. So you just have to be pinpoint focused while making it, which is why metal ifs that are permanent, like in metal materials, are so much more of a nightmare to do because they take so much longer, which means the person making it needs so much more focus for a long period of time to make them, right? But yes, if mana gets put through that material, it would cause the effect that the person intended it to have. So, golems. <laughs> golems are made in layers. There is the ifs layer. Um, so, hold on. There is the, um, the, the fuel source, which is where the mana comes from. How the golem obtains the mana uh, that it uses throughout its body and... Uh, how it distributes it. So, like, the, you know, the, the veins, basically. It's a bunch of metal pipes that lead to all of the components of the golem, uh, and it just... That is his heart, so to speak. Yes, it's his heart. Um, depending on the use of the golem, different fuel sources would be used, uh, because imbuing different things with uh, mana have uh, different properties. The most common two are uh, using just the liquid the same as mana potion, so just salted water that is boiled within the thing, and then it dispels its mana and circle it, circulates it around the body. Uh, the other one is gems and and um, like like rubies and and stuff like that. Um, the downside and upsides of either one of them is uh, the liquid version. Uh, is a lot harder to store because it's a liquid, so you need a tank for it. Um, it's it holds less mana per like um, compared to its volume than gems, um, but it expels it faster. You can expel it faster by just you know flash boiling it, and then it would expel all the mana that it has stored all at once. But with gems, it can hold a lot more, but basically drip feeds the mana out of it. You can't pull mana out of it that fast, or otherwise it would crack or break, or, you know, it just doesn't let you do that. Uh, so, gotta ask, are some of the golems made for war? And do the golems work like batteries? If so, can you possibly recharge one? Yes, you would have to recharge them. Uh, we could also draw from that one Greek golemish monster. Forgot the name, but it has a liquid... Icor as a power source. Hmm. Liquid Icor. Um, I'll, I'll have to look that up. Icor. Talsus? Is that what it what is called? If mana is liquid-like in nature... No, it, it's not... I, I don't know... How to say it? Mana potions. So it's just water with mana in it. It's it's not liquid mana. Phenomenon of... Oh, Talos. Talos. Um, Steam-powered clockwork, guys. So they're more like automaton rather than the Jewish legends. Yes, but... I feel like we could still take inspiration from that Jewish legends where they're sort of made of clay and dirt because um, the only requirement is the power source, um, the actual frame that holds it together, right? And the ifs, which allow it to move. So the 
the um, written scrolls that are like motors that move the components around, right? So those are the only requirements, and the rest, like the outer shell that protects all of the internals, could be designed however you'd like. So that's where we can take inspiration from other things, uh, like clay golems, because we can just make the outside look like pottery, for example. We could have like a cool mechanical golem that has the outside of clay or, or pottery or stuff like that. Which is not golem, and an Im imitation of one. Yes, it is not a true, true golem, but it, it's how the magic system allows golems to happen in the world. And also to answer that question of, are they used in war? Yes, yes they are used. When I previously designed golems beforehand, I designed one that was previously a worker golem designed by the dwarves and bought by one of the factions to be turned into a war golem, which was surprisingly effective on the battlefield. Let me show you. Um, it's this guy. There. Um, this is how I previously designed the golems. The metal sheeting on the outside was just pasted onto it because the golem wasn't previously designed to be for war purposes, so all of its internal components weren't protected much. So they had to just wing it and, and add protective layers on top of it. But these were surprisingly effective in the war. Um, hey yo, just came across and watched your dwarf videos. I gotta say, I really uh, connect with your world building process. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, CJ. Uh, could you possibly turn a golem into a mobile mana nuke that is deployed into a population center? Uh, then through intentional means the mana is allowed to overload yes yes you could definitely do that um it would be more effective just to instead of using the the mana saturation as the limiter uh, just make an if that casts an explosion spell and have a source of combustion inside the thing like um for example uh fire scrolls and stuff like that uh Hold on, where is it? Uh, like these. Uh, these are magic scrolls. They use ifs as well. And uh, the way they work is they have the mana potion within them with salt crystals all around. And there is a central core that gets opened that allows the mana uh, potion to get in, come in contact with... Um, with salt crystals that are imbued with mana, like with the mana potions, and that makes the mana potion go critical and release all of the uh, mana within it, which hits the scroll paper on the outside, which casts the spell with the materials that are within the scroll. So, like, for example, this shield scroll has crushed turtle shells, and um, the, the firebomb scroll and stuff has gunpowder as the um, kindling. I'm also here for that video. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, Grio, Grio Master. I love when tools originally not meant to be used in war are converted to be war machines, like the Titans from Titanfall. Yes, I, I, the thing is, when the, when the lore gets thick enough, I am excited to start mix, uh, I, I am excited to start mixing things. The, a part of fantasy that I think is very untapped as well is in the real world, a lot of overlap happens, a lot of culture mixing happens, uh, different cultures exchange different things and they merge things together, so what would happen if a, a dwarf blacksmith who works in a very particular way and has very particular patterns gets forced to make an armor for a human? Or the other way around, you know, what if an elf gets captured by orcs and is forced to make orc armor? How would that look? You know, it's like mixing and matching. Why is there no more overlap? Like, elf, elves make only armors for elves, and that's the only thing they make. And dwarves only make armor for dwarves, and that's the only thing they make. You never see enough mixing, you know? Like, I wish you could look at something and be like, oh, that's cool, the fabric is made by clearly made by humans, but then the metal parts are look like very fine manufacturing by dwarves, you know? 
Like, I feel like there should be more of that, and I'll, I'll try to do more of that in the world when eventually I have more clear and, and strong foundations to build off of. Yeah. But, um, for example, okay, the, the dwarf... The dwarf golems were used in a war. I'm not going to go into the war, by the way, because that would take too long. There's a war. Um, there's two factions. There's Rom and Verus, and and Verus bought the golems from the dwarves, and they changed them into these war machines to use them on the battlefield, and they were very successful to use them. It was it was great. It was very effective. But some of the golems obviously get destroyed in the process of war, and Rom decided to capture some of them and try to break down their 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 mechanics to figure it out for themselves and they did and they found you know they they figured out a rudimentary way to make the same ifs like magical engines that the dwarves made in their in their golems they they didn't figure out the the intelligence side of it where they basically have like their own brains and stuff like that but they did manage to make, like, moving things. Um, so, Rom developed a tank designed with, um, with ifs, right? Which were from the golems. I am having a fucking seizure here. I can't talk. Uh, let's see, where's the tank? Some of you might have seen it already. It's this thing. Uh, the the crawling king or well I wanted to change the name to crawling bishop because it fit a little more but this thing this is a tank made by the other side after capturing one of the golems and deconstructing it and figuring out, out how it works and they made this thing a uh, finger man punk yeah uh, the cannon also works with magic it has these bullets that are also like ifs with with mana potions and crystals and uh, kindling and the scroll paper outside so um, if you look at the where are the interiors oh uh, there you go uh, here's the interior like I, I, I mapped out how like all the materials and stuff like that would be kept um, how the cannon swivels, you know, so it has enough room to actually look up and down and stuff like that. Um, and, and, like, how the cannon works, where it has, like, this pin that gets hit by a hammer in the back that breaks the, uh, potion, which, which releases the mana, stuff like that. Um, and then, like, how the crew would sit inside as well. Strand Beast. Yes, I did use Strand Beasts as inspiration. I love those weird moving legs. I did take some liberties, of course, because Strand Beast have a problem with hills, um, because they, they have a set pattern, right? Their, their legs move in a certain way, and they go by that rhythm, and anything that disrupts that rhythm isn't good. Uh, but with the tank, I wanted it so the legs could move independently, so they did, like, walk more like a spider. They could go up surfaces and hills and holes and bumps, whatever. Uh, but, but, obviously, that's where the fantasy aspect goes in, you know? I would love to be able to actually manufacture or, or make sense of that and what goes on behind these legs to make that possible, but I just can't because I'm dumb. <laughs> the most practical of movement mechanism. Yes, it is. I, I know that it isn't the most practical... Pra practical movement mechanism either but it looks goofy and weird and memorable to a certain extent so so that's why i used it because it's the rule of cool okay or the rule of goofy in this sense do cars exist in the world i don't know <laughs> i i i think an amount of steam engines would exist or magic engines would exist because of the golems right so there would be vehicles that use magic to propel themselves, um, but not to the point where cars are a regular thing. How long have you been drawing or practicing? Yikes. Um, it's it's been um. Six, seven years now. 
I think six years. Can golems be taught how to love? Sadly, no. Sadly, no. Fuck them. Uh, squash. Sadly, no. Uh, Grade Dorian, thank you for the subscription. I missed a bunch of the subscriptions. Sorry for that. Um, but I, I hope you all know you are very appreciated. Um, I am very honored to have all of you be, be here and listen to me ramble on about my weird world-building project. Anyway. Okay. We've, we've delayed it long enough. Um, so this is the, this is the, the ground rules of how golems work. They have ifs and a, uh, system that sends mana around them, and the rest is, is, is up for grabs, whatever can be used as reference. So, if anybody has any suggestions of what to use as reference, I will search it up. I'm gonna look at Talos, because somebody did mention Talos. Oh, he's just like a buff metal man. Oh, that's just beautiful. Okay, let's put this guy in. There you go, look at this, Talos. Damn. I think the rich have dedicated golems to carry their carriages around would be cool. Yes, that would be cool. Though, it would be bad when they get raided or stuff like that. Um, with the Great War theme, do humans use mounts in combat? Do they have horses or fantas uh, fantasy beasts? I'm very curious about the beasts of burden in this world. Uh, there are things called Norbu, which are like giant kettle. Uh, they're like a cow mixed with an ox, and they're like a, a big thing that is used to move around heavy things, and, and they're like a horse on steroids, right? You would use them in tasks that horses are too weak to do, um, and you would use a Norbu. But there are also creatures used by the Rom, which are like giant moles, um, which are called uh, truffle hogs, and the 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 rom soldiers use them to dig trenches so rom soldiers would have these scrolls that inject roots into a wall or like a pheromone into a wall that would guide the truffle hogs so there would be these these guys called hog masters who who have like bunches of these 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 big bags with a bunch of scrolls of like um trench plans and also the the pheromone scrolls which they would just inject into a wall that creates a straight line that the the hogs go crazy over and they start digging in that direction and you would have to do some cleanup on the edges of the trenches but the main bulk of the trenches would be dug out by these these truffle hogs from an old movie based on jonah the uh argonauts argonauts Oh, yes, yes. It, it, it definitely looks like a very classic stop-motion thing. Um, I can tell that. Seeing your world's building stuff had me motivated to do more work of my own world. That's wonderful. That's that's the, the thing I hope to accomplish, is to just encourage other people to do more world-building. Uh, the image is from an old movie. Oh, okay. uh, everything you add to the world always leads to unexpected uses. Yes, yes it does. Um, like, I, I definitely... The, the magic system, for example, escalated way too far. Um, the, the first intent of the magic system was that I didn't like how, when it comes to mages in fantasy, if somebody can use magic and somebody can't use magic and you strip all their clothes away and just stand them next to each other, you couldn't tell who was what. You couldn't tell who can cast magic and who can't by just their physiology. So I wanted a magic system that was more visual that you could tell a mage apart from a different from from a normal person right so that mages could have more interesting character designs um so that's how the magic system developed i thought of the inputs and outputs because there was something visual on the character that couldn't be removed from them because that would remove the mage part of them right they had to have an input they had to have an output <clears throat> and so that's how 
<laughs> Yikes. I don't have water. I'll probably have to get some of that in a little bit, but... Um, that's how it also happened that the inputs had to be a geometrical shape, like a funnel, or mana is attracted to, to geometrical shapes, because that can then visually influence temples that are meant to attract mana, right? Because giant pyramid shapes or giant funnel shapes would be used in architecture that was meant to attract mana, which in turn can make the design more interesting, right? So the whole purpose of the magic system was to make the design language more interesting and, and more, you know, uh, specific when it comes to magic. So you could tell if something was intended for magic or not. I'm imagining golems have the general human body plan, but stretched and warped uh, to fit their designated purpose. Golems made for construction might be impossibly lanky, so it can move large rocks. Uh, vertically to add to buildings. Yes, 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 yes. As Shadow of the Colossus has an interesting design mix between living creatures and lifeless stone and possible inspiration. Oh yeah, I love Shadows of the Colossus. We might be needing to take some of that. Universal joints. 19th century and and could be good inspiration for the mechanical lads. Universal joints and 19th century automatons. Okay, hold on. Also, this is going to be quite a bit of a challenge for me because I'm not that good with mechanical designs. I, I definitely am more confident with... with uh, creatures and stuff like that so we'll see what i can do but these joints look very good i like these a lot sorry for the uh, constant sounds by the way i'm taking screenshots instead of just Control c Control v who would build the golems the dwarves the dwarf built the golems uh, the reason they built them was because there is only a hundred of them. There are only a hundred dwarves. There are no more dwarves. That's, they can't reproduce, they can only resurrect. So, I haven't gotten into this yet, but there is a maker. There is somebody who makes the dwarves. It's one of their creations. There's this thing that can basically play with um, organic material like it's clay. And they create, they created the, uh, the, the, the dwarves to be their little minions. So they could go out and fetch for materials and inspiration and stuff like that so they can continue their craft. That maker is looking to create their magnum opus. Uh, but they stopped creating the dwarves. They only made a hundred of them and then stopped. Um, though the maker does remake dwarves that die they aren't looking to make any more of them. I will go about naming all 100 dwarves. Yeah, the reason I did that was because in Norse mythology, there was like a book with like just a bunch of names of dwarves, right? So I thought, yeah, what if that's the case? What if there are only that many names and only that many dwarves to go with those names? And if a dwarf dies and then gets resurrected, it would just be the same name. So Otis is always Otis. It's Otis the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, whatever how many versions of him. It's always the same. But it's not like he's actually the same dwarf. They get resurrected from the same material, but they aren't the same dwarf. Like, they have their own different consciousnesses, this is, but it's, it's just the same name. And the thing that happens with that is that, for example, if Otis the, the third was a great leader... He was an inventor of the golems, he was a pioneer of magical sciences, and he dies. And then he gets resurrected. Otis IV is going to have so much baggage on his shoulder, because probably, if that resurrection thing is the case, dwarves would have a tendency to believe that a little bit of the spirit of the previous people that were Otis 
remain in the newer versions, so they would have the expectations of Otis the Fourth being an amazing craftsman, the same as Otis the Third, and that would put some pressure on them. <laughs> Otis sixty seven actually brain dead, yeah. So when a material is overloaded with mana, wait, these golems could also. Sorry, I just stopped reading yours in the middle of it. I'm, I'm hold on. Um, be vibing, die, then be brought back. Classic, book of grudges. Um, these golems could also use real skeletons, uh, for joints and body structure, exo and endo. Uh, maybe they create molds like these skeletons and cast them like refined with refined alloy. Yes, yes, that could be a possibility. I am thinking that resurrecting things, like, okay, um, currently, uh, maybe we could try doing golems with, like, bio muscles. Like, you could basically just write ifs on an actual muscle of, of, or a tendon of an actual thing and just make it move. So, maybe you could make, like, a, like, a, dead corpse into an automaton. Um, so when a material is overloaded with mana, is the material itself destroyed, i.e. atom uh, vanishing, or does it un undergo a change that resembles the material receiving a massive amount of energy? It, it just, like, it breaks apart. It doesn't, like, the, the atoms doesn't get poofed into nothingness. It just gets destroyed, right? like uh, a, a large amount of energy. Otis just deserves to chill. Yeah, the... I, I think it's official now that we do have to name one of the dwarves Otis. Um, always screaming. They don't get worse as they go along. Like, it's not like every version... Uh, Mellow Note, uh, thank you for the subscription. Uh, welcome to the Monster Garden. What if you give golems fake beards, like it's cloth used to store tools? Yes! <laughs> fake beards! Okay, if you have any suggestions about the golems, just give them, uh, or, or throw them in the chat, and then I'll make sure to uh, write them down, and we can sort of distill a concept from it. Fake beards that are tool holders is amazing. Because I think even dwarves are not immune to making things in their own image, so I think dwarves would probably make golems to at least have a face to humanize them. Well, it, in, in the dwarf's case, it wouldn't be humanize, it would be dwarf, dwarfanize, <laughs> to dwarf dwarfify them, right? So they would also probably put fake beards on them. <laughs> fake beards to store tools. Sorry, I sort of got off track with the dwarves. Right, um, there's only a hundred of them, and that means anytime they need more labor force, they can't because there's only a hundred of them, so they made golems to be the labor force, and then they focus on crafting. There you go. That that was it. <laughs> that was the end of it. Just The reason they have golems is because they can't have more of themselves. Um... Tools, but in the shape of beards or rope used to tie things like how, how we make robots in our image dwarf makes golems and theirs. Oh, I should have read the rest of that. You basically said what I said. I'm sorry. I stole your valor. Bio golems make sense. Golem does mean uterus in Hebrew. Oh, I didn't know that. Making your apprentice unnecessarily write ifs on every single muscle fiber is a classic dwarf practical joke. <laughs> that is awful. Yeah, dwarves are very cheeky. They do play a lot of practical jokes. They smoke these smoking pipes and like have drinks, like I wrote on the dwarf page. Um, so they like like playing practical jokes with people who are unexperienced with their culture. They love introducing people to their culture, but love doing it in a way that 
the person getting introduced is the butt of the joke. Um, but also, dwarves don't speak English, by the way. They don't, like, they can't communicate with people normally. The way they do is, um, they, they created these smoking pipes. They have this stuff that they smoke in, in like, uh, sort of Indian-style smoking pipes. Um, and they made, like, magical ifs on those pipes that imbues the sp smoke with magic so that I'm gonna fucking die. I need to get water. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me get this last sentence out, and then I'm gonna go get something to drink. They imbued the pipes with magic, so if you inhaled the smoke, and then blowed it into somebody's face, they would understand what you said. Like, if you spoke while breathing the smoke out, and blew it into someone's face, they would understand you. So that's what they- so, <laughs> just imagine a market of dwarves, where they just blow smoke in your face to have conversations. That's how it goes. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna go get water. I am dying. Uh, which, oh, there's water right here. Never mind. I am not going to get water, because there's water right behind me. <clears throat> God. Your world building is decided, uh, decidedly more beardful. <laughs> beardful? <laughs> Uh, thank you, than any I've ever seen. I love puns, so thank you very much. Search for Steam Knight, giant steam mech, as a mechanical reference. Is there a design of the maker yet? Maybe make golems in the image of their maker? Um, I did do like a tiny sketch of the maker when I made the gol uh, when I made the dwarves, but I didn't actually draw the maker yet, because I, I was trying to strike the balance of, like, greater being but still grounded in the world. Like, it's actually physically there in the world somewhere, but it also has this design that seems so alien, right? So there's a hard balance to strike. I, I, I thought of them as having these fingers that would split off indefinitely. Like, they, they a, a finger would split into two and then four and then eight, and it would sort of trail off into nothingness where you can't even see the tips of their fingers anymore because they can just sort of deconstruct you on a molecular basis. They can just pull you apart and then put you back together. Maybe an uh, especially artistic dwarf would make the golem a detailed m mask? Is that a different thing from a mask? A, a mask? M-A-S-Q-U-E that releases exhausts from a chiseled pipe in its mouth and other and another more uh, utilitarian dwarf finds that a de clay what are these words de clace and whimsical yes um, dwarves would have different like ways of designing but a smoking pipe exhaust is very cool Exhaust. I am not good with spelling either, so uh, just enjoy that. I will not change it. You will just have to suffer. I don't even know if that's spelled correctly or not. I might be saying, like, it might be correct, but I don't know. Um. Okay. With your more unique approach to dwarves, you could also try to flip the golem on their heads and maybe take a look at some Boston Dynamics designs. Oh, like going really futuristic, like cultural hazing. Uh, Otis 1075 inside a mech suit, ripping and tearing through his enemies. Jesus Christ. Is the language of your world canonically English? Um, I feel like it would be the most simple to make it English. Um, just because I sadly... Um, English is the best language I have. I, I am not, uh, it, it's not my first language. It's my third language, but it's, it's the one I'm the most used to. So, uh, 
you, you don't even want to hear the other two. <laughs> the other two are even more sad than English. Uh, yes, this is Pog as hell. War of blowing cigar smoke in people's faces to communicate is awesome. Yeah, but also uh, the the markets of dwarves are very quiet because dwarves have uh, this this thing where they really want their their the things they make to speak for themselves, right? They won't like be like, hey, come come look at my wares, look at my armor. They'll literally just sit there quietly and wait till you come up to look at it yourself and inspect it yourself because they want you to be allured by the item itself, not their loudness or, or how loud they can they can call you over or whatever, right? So it's it's a it's a it's pride, right? Uh even in fantasy I cannot escape the Britons. <laughs> Is the water crisp? Culture with only one hundred dwarfs, it should be tight. Yes, yes, it would be very tight. Like, it's like a very tight-knit family, and everyone would probably know everyone else. Instead of language, they should use grunts. <laughs> you know, I, I've, I have this thing that I wanted to do with the dwarves. Um, so, however detailed my world will get, and however deep I go into the anatomy of every single species, breaking their insides down, I will never reveal what's behind that stash and what's behind that beard. It will always remain a mystery. So just ponder whatever you like. Picture, when a, when a dwarf talks, picture the beard moving, like a cartoon character, but you never find out what's behind it. The way they eat, they just put a piece of bread behind the beard and it disappears, but you will never know what's behind there. I will never draw it. It'll just be a mystery. Because I think that's funny. Okay. Um, the harpy... Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm reading so slow, by the way. Uh, harpy on the stream overlay looks fascinating. Is there any place I can read up about them? Um, I just drew a random harpy thing on <laughs> I didn't have any lore about the the harpy. I, I I was sort of just like, okay, how do I represent like the the art I do weirdly on uh, an overlay on the stream? And I was like, a oh, weird harpy thing with hands and a decapitated head and a mouth and its neck, and and that's what came out. So like, I don't have any lore over what that thing is. Sorry. It's a mask, but French. Ah, I see a French mask. Lads, we must make more Otis. <laughs> Maybe give golems or dwarves dual-sided finger joints so they can kind of use them like a claw. Mechanical claw, not cat claw. Ah. Otis 420 vibin' in the hardest of the <laughs> Yeah, it would be fun to have a, a, a golem hand that is both-sided. Or, like, the, the fingers are like this, right? And then they could just go both ways, and you have two thumbs on either side. That could be nice. I don't know why you would want that. <laughs> like, um... Because you'd only be able to use one side at a time unless there's enough fingers to have half of them go this way and the other half go that way. But why would you want to hold two things in one hand on opposite sides of the hand? He's communicating very hard with the pipe. By the way, is your world building world in magic punk genre? It's okay. I my world is still in like a weird phase where I'm not sure if I want it to be medieval or more modern. Like the war has technologies like muskets, but their uniforms are designed like that of World War One, similar to World War One, but also made of gambeson, which is more like medieval. Um, but I want there to be things like steam engines that are magical, so it is sort of steamy as well. I don't know, right? And now the most recent design I did for mages 
is completely off from that previous thing. It is more in the sense of, um, like, look at this. Okay. This is one design that didn't really take off, like, nobody really saw it on Twitter, which is fine, but I like it. Okay? Uh, it's, it's inspired by Thai, um, outfits, right? Uh, these, these patterns on the cloth, that's Thai. Uh, Thailand, if you're wondering, Thailand. Um, I really like the patterns that we use here, and I feel like they're very underutilized in, in concept art and stuff like that. So I thought I should probably imbue uh, some of that stuff into my own drawings and make it a part of the world. But I, I have no idea how the hell I'm going to mix all of these elements together. Like, it's just a mess. It is constantly changing, and I don't know what to do with it. Okay, a language sadder than English, not possible. I got Kolok Floctus from Skyward Sword type vibes when trying to picture these dwarf golems. Also, I saw your take on dwarves on Twitter and I love them. Thank you. A uh, dry cola. Interesting name. But also, uh, you can design cool looking symbols and stuff. Otis gonna be. Uh, what do you mean, cool looking symbols? Like, you mean if I invent my own language for the uh, for the world? Otis is just chat. Otis is love. Otis is life. Oh no. We're going the Shrek route, are we? Since the dwarves are designed as part kinda as parts kinda slip into place, I'd imagine golems would be the same. Made for of standard parts that are really customizable and, and just slot into place. Yes, yes, yes. Customizable. So uh cus Like, okay, customizable, yes, but I also want there to be an element of, like, uh, G Germany in the war. You know, when they, they designed tanks, they kept changing the design while they were manufacturing them. Um, I, I don't know much about war stuff, by the way, it's just because I play World of Tanks a little bit. No, not World of Tanks, uh, War Thunder. But... They, they kept changing the designs of the tanks while manufacturing them. Like, they would change where the where the entry port is or how the engine is fitted. And so it made it a nightmare to actually fix some of the tanks because all of them didn't have... They just had little tweaks to the parts that should be standard. Um, so I think there should be a part of that in the dwarves as well, where they, they're relentless with their pursuit of perfection and 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 building newer and better things that they can't really stick to a consistent thing because any dwarf on the pipeline would just be like, yeah, we can do it the way we have, but I feel like it could be better. I saw one of the golems break down because one of the joints was in a bad position and it, it, it didn't hold the load well. So maybe with this new design, we could just shift it a little bit. And, and so golems just sort of morph at, over time because they keep fixing and tweaking and not getting their hands off of it. Uh, would a dwarf... Wait. Uh, I love this. Setting your own boundaries, black boxes, is an underrated world-building technique. Yes. Um, I, I find it very important to be... To, to set limits to things, which is why I'm having trouble with the design of the actual world, because I keep adding new things into it, and I don't know when to stop. And I should have a limit, but I don't know where that limit is yet. Uh, would a dwarf even take on a human smithing apprentice? Uh, coming back to human civilization bow-legged and attempting a... <laughs> attempting a beard very good at smithing but terrible at communicating now without smoking? <laughs> no, okay, the thing is, the dwarf... So I haven't done much environmental work to show how the environments look, but um, the dwarf cities are all underground. But they're separated into two parts, two main parts. There is the visitor portion, which is literally designed to just hold visitors. It is accommodating for humans. It is designed for humans to be able to walk around it. But that's only for them, right? That's where all the markets happen. That's where all the communication between the races happen. But 
Then there is the actual core of their kingdoms, their, their civilizations, that is designed for them, which have winding tunnels that go vertically upwards and downwards and to the side because they can climb walls like nobody's business. They're, they're, they're insects, right? Which means their, their, their walkways and stuff like that are winding. They don't care about the direction of things, which means you couldn't really have a human apprentice because they wouldn't be able to maneuver around their actual kingdom at all. Right? Because it wasn't designed for people. Um, keeping in line with the uh, frantic theme of... what, With the fractal theme of the maker, uh, maybe giant hands uh, each have the five fingers... What? Wait, hold on. Maybe giant hand where each of the five fingers has hands on it? For the golems? Yes! That would be cool. Okay, I'll just say hands on hands. Which is good enough. I, I think I can understand that. Okay, uh, it's 2.47 a.m. and all I can think about are Lad Otis help. Oh, Thalia Keeper, I'm so sorry, okay? Otis is a precious boy and it, it's just, he, he has to be in our minds. But please, find some time to go to sleep. That is way too late to be up. Um, I would know that because last night I went to sleep at 3.30. If a split middle and pinky and pointer ring on one side, each you can grab things without a thumb. Right, right, just a claw. You you could do that as well. Just, like, some sort of claw design. We could do that. What about semi-bio golems? Uh, growing muscle for movement, but no other organic components. I have thought of that, but I think the technology in the world isn't at that point yet, but it's getting there. Um, like, it's getting developed by the people in the world. Um, I uh, just put a fire element. I am not catching up to this chat at all. Hold on. I'll just focus on reading it. Well, just inventing your own letter lettering system with its own symbols. Yeah, so basically like just a code system, right? Where, where the equivalent of the English letter is um, in its own symbol in my language. Because we could invent our own language, but Jesus Christ, that's going to be too much. Um, basically like Warframe, you know, we cut out some letters and stuff like that, so everybody sounds a little weird, uh, grainier and, and, and corpus language. So yeah, but, uh, something like that, probably. Uh, well, just, uh, inventing your own butcher system. Oh, uh, Otis73 just wanting to see the world burn. Oh my god, Talia, stop! <laughs> it's enough, Otis. I'll try time is called gotta go make fun bud love you babe and don't overlook uh love you too handicap i you're <laughs> jesus christ um just watch the dwarf videos and i love it um would absolutely watch a series of you redesigning classic fantasy creatures that's what i'm aiming to do as well uh, all the other fantasy creatures would be a part of the world as well, but just in their own li little different ways that I'll have to design. Um, I think it would be interesting if instead of signs, dwarfs use giant vents and pipes to disperse large smoke clouds that tell you um, desired information. Hmm, that is interesting. Golems are... Well, uh, the language of the dwarves is designed to be engraved into material. Um, so it's like... Morse code. Uh, no, it's like Braille. Um, so it it is. It's Braille because they work. Their their caverns are dark and they can see. Or or. Oh God, my brain. The dwarf language is like Braille, because when the dwarves are climbing through their hallways, it is written around the edge of the hallways. So when you walk into a room, you feel it, and you can already tell what's in the room. You don't have to look at a sign or anything. You just touch the wall and know what it is, right? And it's the same with... 
with the stuff on their body, right? Um, this, the, the carvings, you could put letters into these to make it like braille, so you can, you can, okay, they can also read it visually, but you could technically just touch a dwarf and be able to read his history or his achievements on his body. I don't think the dwarf would be okay with that, but you could, technically. Just do it while he's sleeping. No, that's even more creepy. Never, just don't touch him at all. Um, golems are like a video game, stuck in development hell. Yes, golems are transformers. Uh, if they keep reworking the golems, they could be molded from multiple metal. Uh, as they keep reworking the design for each part. Yeah, like, uh, e even one golem that is already finished, uh, like, finished, built, would still have, like, things pasted onto it that are adjustments and attachments and things changed around, so, like, I, I think that would be, uh, an important part to, to get from the design. I'll write that down, but hold on. I gotta finish. Stop typing! Oh god, you guys! I am very happy that all of you are here to listen to me ramble and not even draw, which is the whole point of the stream, but still, I can't read this fast. What are elves like? Are are they like lower gods, like in mythology? I will get to that. Simon! Uh, how about small golems are a smart core that can use mobile technology suits as a body, like a, a miniature version of dwarves running around the city? Uh, that would be nice, though I think the ifs would prevent it from be being that small. Ifs can be written very small, but there is a limit to it, and the dwarves have a limit to how small they can get. And even with how small they can get, the, the golems are as big as they are because they can't get ifs any smaller without making it a, a hassle to create. Um, doll here. Oh, hey. Um, dropping by to say hey. Uh, glad to see you on stream again. Yes, I'm glad to be on stream again. Speaking of Warframe, Atlas would be a good reference. Sort of. Uh, the 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 beef curtain uh, bacon Warframe. I'm I'm not sure if I'll be able to take anything from his design, but we'll see. Uh, never enough Otis. As someone with a bit of language building experience, it is really hard. Um, this is very good. Well, if it comes to the language of the dwarves, if I did make a language, I would make it the most efficient language ever. With some languages um, that exist in the world, there are, there are things that are so good about the language, but then they fuck it up ev every time. You know, like German, for example, most of the time they have it well with like the letters sounding the way, they, the letters sound consistent. An A is always an A, and it doesn't change like in English where some letters change depending on the word and how you pronounce them. German is pretty good with that, but then they fuck it up with having a gender for literally every item, and there's no consistency, so you just have to remember if the water bottle's a he or a she. It's stupid, but that's where they mess it up. There's another thing in Thai language, for example, in Thailand, we don't have past and future tense. We only have words that root the sentence in a certain time period. If you ate yesterday, you would just see you would just say, "I eat yesterday," which is enough to know. I don't know why English, or that is a great thing to have, right? Because then you have to remember a third of the words because there's no future and past tense. There's just the present tense of the word, and then you just say a word that tells you what time it happened in the sentence, and then that's good enough. You know it happened then, and it makes sense, right? So. But then they fuck it up by having too many letters, too many letters that aren't used that well, and a letter that is literally used to make a letter not be sounded out. So, okay, look at this. Um, you could have, uh, uh, okay, that, that's a word. It's not a word, but it's just a random sound, but gook, that's how you write gook, right? But you could just put this thing on top of its head, and then you would say, Goo. this is cancelled out by this fucking thing. And they have it because sometimes in words, uh, the end of the words get cut off. It's used commonly when English words are translated into Thai. So we have Thai words that are just English words, but we, we like don't sound out some of the letters. That's why we have such bad accents in English. Um, so we put this thing on top, 
uh, signifying that we don't say that letter. It doesn't have a sound. But then my question is, why don't you just cut the fucking thing out? Why do you need to see it? Like, oh, it's there, just don't say it. Well, then just remove it! What's the point? You know, like, just fucking don't have it. I don't... Okay, anyway. But yeah, I would take the best parts of each of those languages, like, have words that are consistent, have uh, no future and past tense, and just have rooting words that root them in the past or in the future, or tomorrow afternoon, or whatever. That's how I would do it. Um... Colonist is hard as fuck. Okay, uh, dwarf fortress faces. Uh, dwarf fortress. I, I I didn't know they had faces. I thought they were just symbols. I didn't know dwarf fortress had any um, graphics. Um, I'm gonna centrally read that beautiful. <laughs> oh no, can't hug dwarves. I mean, you can, but I don't. Knowing the personality of dwarves, I don't think they would be up for hugs. Um. You can hug Otis, except for Otis, exactly. Otis is so down to hugging. You know what I think? Um, uh, is Otis, like, when, when dwarfs hibernate, sometimes they have, like, moss growing on them, and when they wake up, they scrub it off because it's dirty. Um, I feel like Otis would keep the moss. He just likes being green, you know? Otis just keeps the moss, so he's nice and green and stuff. Uh... It is nearly 5 a.m. for me. God, please go to sleep. I will sleep. I apologize for, uh, dis what, discursive questions. My final suggestions for aesthetic inspiration is Willock muskets and ext Okay, let me write that down. Um... Wheel... Muskets. Ugh. And... For Baroque clockwork stuff. Well, thank you very much. And I hope you have a good sleep. Actually, that's an idea. Dwarves, when meeting each other... Uh, could do a hug as opposed to a handshake or a bow like to reach each other's histories yeah that could be that could be a thing actually they might be down to hugging actually dwarves might be down to hugging you're right uh, the golems having some sense of alleviation and the ability to float levitation and it, float could be subtle for traversing the inner kingdom well, we would have to design them to be able to traverse the um, the the winding corridors as well. But like, then at that point, I, I was thinking as well that the the dwarf kingdom would be winding for the dwarves themselves into their own like houses and stuff like that. But then there would be the tunnels that are built for golems, so they're large enough. the The construction tunnels, you know, the mining tunnels and stuff like that, they aren't built they aren't built winding. They are built more for machinery and stuff like that. So they'd be bigger anyway. You should check out the design of Somali and a uh, Force Spirits Gold. Oh my. I'm, I'm never gonna be able to finish. Why is there always more text? I feel bad for skipping it as well. I can't, like, just not read it. Okay. Uh, and the Spirit Gold. Brothers and sisters, join us in your our Church of Otis. <laughs> I wonder if the language being braille like leads to handshaking and other forms of touching being important to uh, greetings as you can get a snippet of their the other's history from it. Yes, it would be very important. So yeah, let me write that down just on this page actually. Uh dwar dwarves like touching. <laughs> to learn hands-on smirk there you go yo you're Thai yes yes I am Thai 
Kellot. Yes, Kellot. Exactly. That's the thing I mean, where it's like, uh, we, we, we use the English word, but we just cut, put that fucking thing on top of the Lalua to just cut it out. It's, it's stupid. <laughs> That's a good point concerning language use. Otis has a small tree growing on him. 3 a.m. for me. It's 6 a.m. for me. Uh, Otis. Wait, why is there... It's always the same amount of text. I'm like... Aynar has a good point concerning handshaking, like, in, uh... Lading gold into the particular grooves would make it easier to know someone's name status. Yes, okay. Uh... Gold in... Lay... In... Name... Status... Okay, God, I gotta get through this. Uh, they could have a basic introduction on their forearms and do a Roman, a Roman handshake followed by a brother. Oh, this is such a good idea. Uh, intro duction on forearm. Roman handshake, brother, bro hug. Okay, um, all of you need to go to sleep. It's not good for your health. Exactly, all of the people who are like past midnight, that is really not good, I know from experience. Uh, we now need official art of Otis. We do, we do need art of Otis. I, I bet the dwarves have a sport like uh, the cheese rolling thing in the UK. <laughs> Night Owls, um, FTW. I don't know abbreviations that well. I don't know what FTW is. Uh, I am Insomnia. Uh, yes, that's, uh, cool. This feels like something a dwarf would do. Yes, official art of Otis. Just a bunch of dwarves rolling down a hill. Roly poly Otis rolling into the room. I like the idea of dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts? Uh, what... I mean, a lot of things use the name Dreadnought. What what are you meaning in particular? Do you mean the Dreadnoughts from fucking Deep Rock Elect? Um, rolling like Roid... Roidicus? <laughs> rolling in the jar form. Yes, because they are jar forms. They could totally just roll and tumble down a hill. Dwarves having a handshake with a human reading their fi uh, fingertips like... Gibberish is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you have... Uh, a Pinterest account? Do you have a Pinterest? I really want to see stuff that you save. I, I, I don't have a Pinterest account, sorry. Um, Otis is just a stand-in for the community and our random madness. Yes, yes it is. Um, uh, I, I feel like Otis is like a, a mad tinkerer who just throws together random shit and somehow like creates uh, f like uh, innovations and stuff. It's like, Otis, how the fuck did you... Invent this shit. Uh, the clay-skinned folk, Amhun, in my world, engrave information into their skin and have it submerged or emerge whenever they need it. Ooh, that is interesting. No sleep. Nightmares keep me up. Haha, <laughs> fleece. Uh, fleece? Already got dwarf humor down. Three. Uh, FTW for the win. What does that mean? For... Oh, oh, it... <laughs> I, I, yes, it means for the win. I thought you were like, FDW for the win. What the fuck is FDW? Why is it winning? It's for the win. That's what it means. Okay. Dreadnought from Warhammer. Oh, do you have any concepts for gods in your lore? Uh, I was referring to another person whose name was Dreadnought in the chat, and that's his idea. It was a good idea. Oh, that's what you meant. Uh, are the streams always like that? No, because normally I don't have this many people in the stream. Normally I, I, I read it, and then I have time to draw for a little bit, and then I read another thing. But there's like 27 people in here, and I want to read everything, and it feels bad to skip over things that people write, right? So normally no, but normally sort of yes, I do babble a lot. Hello, long time. Hey, Banana Man, long time no see. Can't Otis be a god? Okay, so about the god thing. Um... Gods in the world, so, 
In my world, I don't want to draw gods. It's not because they don't exist. I won't confirm or deny that they exist. I design things and write things from the perspective of what the people in the world would know. So it's if if a culture believes in a god, that doesn't mean that that god exists. That means that they believe it exists, right? So there could be gods that people write about, and I can draw the gods that people write about and people believe in, but I will never confirm if they actually exist or not, right? Because that's what the people would know, right? There might be um, unexplainable events that happen in the world that could be conceived as being godlike and miracle-esque, but I wouldn't confirm if they were a god's doing or not, because that would ruin the illusion. I, I don't like one thing in, in fantasy when it's like, you, the people in the world know the names of the gods, they know exactly what they look like, they know exactly what they can do, and it sort of removes the mysticism from the gods, you know? It's like, instead of this higher being, it's just the buddy next door you know. Oh, you mean fucking uh, Demeter? Oh, you mean uh, uh, Hercules? Yeah, yeah, my buddy, Hercules, he's, he's strong as hell. Like, I, I would rather want them to be just the belief of gods instead of them actually being perceivable and the dwarves know exactly what their god looked like and, and that it exists or whatever. Um, I came across your dwarf art a bit ago and I really enjoyed it. I'm shamelessly stealing it for character art in the new uh, Gods of Mankind game. Look forward to seeing uh, other cool stuff. Wait, what? I am shamelessly stealing it for character art in a new Gods of Mankind game. Looking forward to seeing other cool stuff. What? <laughs> You're stealing it? I mean, you could have just asked. If, if, if you want to take inspiration from it, sure, go ahead. I mean, don't just... I, I, I would suggest don't just take my page and give it to your design lead or whatever. Just maybe change a little bit, you know, put a put a put some horns on him or make him a little shorter. Then you can send it. But sure, go ahead. Otis is one true uh dwarven god. Otis, okay, look, we gotta write some we gotta draw something about Otis. Uh so I will I will make sure we, we look into Otis to see what we can make with him. Uh there could be powerful mages pretending to be a god to the people couldn't see uh, the difference. Uh, yeah, yeah, that could be a possibility. We need more subs for this channel. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you think so. Uh, Banana Man is Banana Dog, female dog. Uh, very fire and blood vibes on the world building. Fire and blood, by the way, is an in-universe history of Westeros from the Game of Thrones story. Oh, I see. Also a great read. Hmm. I don't read. <laughs> I, I mean, I want to read, but I don't have the attention span for it. Um, from the perspective of an um, exercise scientist, if you want creatures to um, be able to move heavy things with less muscle mass, they would require shorter limbs, small movement arms. Okay, I'll, I'll be sure to keep that in mind. Give Otis a fill official video. I will, I will look into what I can do with Otis. Uh, the longer the moment arm, the more muscle mass uh, force required to move the object and the end of the moment arm. Makes sense. Um, I think Kyle was talking about a tabletop game. Uh, you've gotten back into world building my verse. Uh, take a listen to the audiobook then. Yeah, fair. I, I could do audiobooks. Hi, I saw your dwarf video and I came here. Hello, uh, Taka Akat. Glad to have you here. Okay, let's let's go do golem things. Okay, what do I have to look into? I have to, um, uh, wheel lock muskets. I'll also look into Jewish golems to to see what we can take from them. Oh, well, they look cute. Well, these things.
Yeah, the, the the background music I'm not in control of. I just let it play and and recommend whatever it does. It's um just YouTube doing its thing, so I have no idea. Uh oh what is this? I uh this is what I got when I searched up Jewish Golem, or one of the images I got when I searched up Jewish Golem. It's uh play Edna. Jesus Christ. I don't know what that is, but uh, might be able to use it as inspiration. I love the... Um, okay, one thing that I like about the Jewish golems is their faces. Like, they're just holes, which is cool. Right? It, it, it both has no expression, but also such a weird emptiness to it. Like this. It, it, it's strange, but I like it. From the movie The Golem. Ah, I see. Uh, the Golem from Jewish lore uh, was a singular being formed from clay and animated by the truth of God. Um, there really not much else to it, I see. Kabbalism is an interesting concept to include if you want to look at Jewish golems. The idea of just speaking a divine language being enough to cast magic. Huh. Uh, I feel dwarves would have something really chill with heavy drums that feels out of place. Um, a good. Now we need a Discord for the Church of Otis. A good. It's another abbreviation, I guess. It's from the movie The Golem. There's only one golem in Judaism. Uh, Adam was a golem as well. Oh, Adam. Was was it, it? It did say something about like him being sculpted from clay, right? You could use Dogu uh, figures as a reference if you don't already have it on your list. Dogu figures. Oh yes, these things. That's what they're named. Oh, these these are gonna be so good as reference. Yeah, so we're basically just thinking about the exterior design and the look of them. So, like, outer designs like this are, are what interest me. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. Look at this one. Um, give me Castle in the Sky movie golems. Uh, I, I do like those golems a lot. You know what happened? I, I watched that movie when I was very, very young, and then it kept reoccurring in my dream, and I thought I was just having a weird dream about golems. Like, I, I, I see that design in my head, and I was like, the fuck is that? Like, when did I... And then I finally, like, saw the movie again when I was older, and I was like, it exists? That's actually a thing? I thought that was just like a weird reoccurring dream I had about a flying castle and some weird golems. But it was actually a movie, and I watched it and enjoyed it again, because I completely forgot about it. Um, it's a different one. Big eyes, small mouth. Um, my veiled folk uh, don't have faces, but instead wear veils with a symbol on it that represents their long names. It's not really cloth, but parts of their body. How about making their face full bearded? Full beard. Wait, like, just a beard? No head? Clay Dune Strider. Risk of rain. Oh yeah, the, the Clay Dune Striders are... Well, they're just pots, aren't they? Clay... Dune. Yeah, they're just pots with, uh, with weird goopy legs um hmm yeah they are just pots somebody made a minecraft skin of the clay dune strider 
Uh, no big mouth, small eyes. Uh, how did you learn to draw so well? I kept drawing. That's that's sort of it. I I I don't know. I just kept drawing. I I. I the one thing that you will probably never see on my channel or me talk about is like giving art advice. It it seems like there's a certain level where where famous artists get where they can just give all the amazing advice and do like all these amazing videos to share their their knowledge with them. I'm never gonna reach that because I have no fucking idea what I do. I I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know any of the lang of, of like the 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 terminology of like oh this is a this is a a, a cast shadow and a and a bounce light and uh, and, and rim job, and fucking, uh, C-section, I, I don't know. I, I don't know all the art terminology, so I, I, I am not qualified to give any advice to anyone. By the way, the golems in Risk of Rain have actual skeletons and flesh inside them. What? They do? Ugh. Art advice, draw. I mean, yeah, that is literally, <laughs> just draw more. Like, you sort of just figure shit out as you go along. Eventually, it'll sl like, the first few years of drawing just happen so fast. And then you eventually have to look at videos where, like, okay, now it's starting to slow down. I don't know what to do. And then you just look at videos of people that are really amazing at art. There's so many of them already. I don't know. I, I wouldn't need to add to the, the library, the catalog of people that already give amazing advice. Especially with how little I've qualified. Yeah. Like, I, I, I got an offer to be an art teacher once. Um, where, but, but they asked me to, like, teach technically. Like, for, for, like, shading and, and uh, anatomy and stuff like that. I'm like, I, I, I would be interested to be an art teacher, but not about that. Like, I would w want to be more for, like, uh, Creative designing, you know, like encouraging creative design and and pushing the limits of, of of what you can do, or or what you can design, how far you can push a design, um, not like the technical bit. I I don't really care about the technical bit. I care more about the ideas behind them, you know. The technical bit is just to allow you to express those idea. But if if it's good enough to show what you mean and people look at it and understand what you're trying to say, then that's good enough. You'll figure it out. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. I'm gonna repeat this. Otis' personal golem is just a big mass of random ideas mashed together into a useless mess. I guess I'm stuck with AI until I learn to draw. God damn. Okay, so, um, let's look at some shapes. So, I'm gonna take some screenshots of, uh, the the dwarves themselves because they will try to like imitate themselves to a certain extent right uh thank you very much for the follow garwin okay so the dwarves uh, but then also I think we could take some of the previous dwarf designs as inspiration as well. Uh, the more mechanical one in particular. Um, which is the version previous to the fourth version. This is the third version of... Um, this is after I played Elden Ring. And um, the, the giant golem things with the, with the staves... That got me inspired to like draw it like this because it has those kinds of patterns on it as well. But yeah, so let's just play around with some shapes, okay? Because I think we aren't. Uh, hold on. Um, I I forgot to write down the, uh, constant. Constantly improving and changing. So I feel like this would be an important part to get in the design. Like, um, instead of just designing a clean golem, it would have to be a golem that's sort of patched together and has add-ons and, and things put onto it 
that that make it look like it's been worked on constantly. So yeah. I want a core of the golem that can like swivel and move and maybe have a, a head similar to uh, this guy so we can just have a head on like a swivel. Uh, the inside of the arms and stuff like that would have to be protected as well, because if they're lifting heavy stuff, then you wouldn't want it to damage the joints. Big nose, and then just big old cloth beard as well. And their legs would have to be more hefty to uh, support the weight. But yeah, this this is sort of like a very basic shape. I, I want it to be that the 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 scrolls inside them, the ifs, like dictate their shape quite a bit because they have to stick out. Like, okay, this is a pivot point, right? It turns this way, which means there has has to be an axle and uh, uh, an if somewhere like this right you could do some gear work but i think this would be more interesting so it like forces it that the limb has to be a weird shape like this to work right and then when it comes to the fingers um it would be hard to have if small enough to fit within each finger so they would instead have pulley systems that go into the arm and then connect up to ifs that go out like this right and then they would just connect up to pulleys within the arm uh have nice seeing your stream again okay take care uh take bleh, bleh. take care oh. <clears throat> take care dreadnought uh it was very nice having you uh take care I know something that has helped me and a bunch of my artists wait cloth on both dwarves and golems will with braille for identification. I think the the braille would be on harder surfaces like the metals instead. Uh, the cloth would be too flexible and hard to like uh read, I think. It might like get faint like it might fade over time, you know. Uh uh, I have something that has helped me and a bunch of artist friends improve quickly. It's just hardcore drilling fundamentals, doing figures and gesture drawings, doing studies and art you enjoy. Yeah, um, the thing that I've been doing for like practice is I, I try to draw. I anytime I do like a practice, I do give myself ten minutes to do it, and then I just drop it and do something else, or 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 do the next thing. Like for example, if I practice rendering. I will find something that I want to practice rendering, like I find a piece of armor, and then I try to render that piece of armor in 10 minutes. And then I just stop doing it after 10 minutes and then do it again. Like start over and give myself another 10 minutes. And I feel like those first 10 minutes give a lot more value to me than if I were to spend all the time to like finish rendering it, right? That would be like an hour more for not that much information. So I just do 10 minutes each time and just ditch it after 10 minutes. And it, it helps a lot. And then after, um, if, or if, if that's too boring, then I do like, okay, I render the armor 10 minutes and then, okay, 10 minutes over. And then I draw my own drawing, but use the texture of the armor. So I will try to use the armor in a design that I do myself and then try to render the armor in 10 minutes. That's my own design, but the same armor. So it like sort of engraves it into my head. Like, okay, remember this shit. 
Um, I do practice, but it's not very well. So I use AI sometimes. Also, I find it never shows what I'm trying to create, but just a static image that has barely anything I want in it. Can your heads go 360 degrees around? Yeah, yeah, I think that would be fun if they can go 360 degrees around. I think all of their parts would have to, because when they're climbing through, like, um, weirdly shaped tunnels, they would have to, like, do that. You know? I feel like they would be something like this. Like, their legs would be up to their stomach, and then they would turn their torso around to have the arms be in the back. Like that. So they can, like hold on to both sides and just crawl through the tunnels. Um, is it possible that each dwarf has their own style of golems that they make? Uh, I think there would be some similarities between them, but yes, everyone would have their own like unique little take on how they design them. Um, I'm seeing exoskeletons of sorts here. Uh, peace, bro, I've gotta go. Uh, I'll watch next video. Okay, take care. Thank you for being here. Uh, take your golem forearm and strum the tendon cords like a guitar string. Hmm. Do you have a Discord for your community? Uh, yes. Yes, I do, actually. I do have a Discord. Hold on, let me send you a link into the chat. It is not that active, by the way. Um, <laughs> I, I, it, I don't have like any activities in it. You can talk to me in it. That's about it, because um, I'm in there. But outside of that, there is nothing special that happens. Okay, uh, here you go. Uh, there, that's the, uh, that's the link for you. Enjoy. Did that work? Yes, yes, that did work. Cool. I shall help spread the word of Otis. <laughs> I think it's better than it's chill. Yeah, I, I do like more of a calm uh, attitude when it comes to in, in servers. I don't like when it's very hectic and stuff, because I'm... I, like, on stream I talk a lot, obviously, but in, in, in a room with people, or talking to multiple people, I much more enjoy just staying quiet and listening to how the conversation goes. I'm not good at being the lead in the conversation or bringing up interesting topics. I, I just listen a lot and stay quiet. Hello, who made golems in your setting? It's the dwarves. The dwarves made golems. Actually, this shape is interesting, the um, macaroni shape. Maybe we want some weird shapes in the design. I think I should draw smaller, because then I can be more imaginative. If I draw too big, it becomes bad. Uh, uh, blue X's. Thank you for the uh, subscription. Uh, with a chicken, with the chicken strips. Yes, dwarves. Are your dwarves? Uh, and your dwarves are cool looking. Thank you. Uh, not symmetrical body. That sounds good. Yes, not symmetrical is also interesting. Um, not. Symmetric. Okay, you know what we should do? Um, I, I shouldn't be designing the golems without a purpose. Like, right now, we can draw them forever if I do it like this, because um, I, I didn't, like, assign any goal of what I'm trying to accomplish with the golems, which is something I always find myself doing, and it's a mistake. So what I should be doing, actually, is thinking of a reason the golem is created, why this golem is a thing, and then we can dictate the design from there. So what is the purpose of this golem? If we're designing one golem, we're designing just one of them first. 
What's the purpose of it? What does it do? I think it should be either mining uh, or construction. Like, very utility. Yeah, construction. Uh, mining, construction, which means it needs to be... So, uh, requirements of the design. It needs to look sturdy. Uh, versatile. Transportation of minerals. Uh, heavy lifting. Yeah, it needs to look like it can lift heavy. Which also would mean, like, transporting minerals. Uh, lift heavy. Do the golems serve different purposes? Like, some are bodyguards, miners, etc. There are uh, specialty tools for more general ones with... Uh, yes. Uh, they would serve different roles. It wouldn't just be one. Uh, pickaxe hand. Just pop a crane on the golem's back. It needs to be heckin' chunky. Hold on, give me a sec. Sorry. So, it needs to look like it lifts heavy things. So, I think, uh, like the... I, I, I forgot who said it, but the, uh, the moment arm needs to be short. So, the limbs shouldn't be that long. The limbs should be more stocky and, and robust looking. So, the legs as well should just be chunky as hell. And, okay, are we thinking two legs is the best way to go here? Or, or... Four legs. Lower center of gravity. A uh, four would give it more support for weight bearing. Yeah, four. There is a reason we use tools for big construction projects. Three legs and three arms. Rotund lad. Four legs, each for moving in a direction faster without turning. Yeah, okay, four legs. It's gonna be hard. I really am not good with like mechanical designs. Hmm. It could give the mountain concept where a dwarf slot in like a jar shape. Yeah, I, I was thinking that the, the golems might have, like, a wall slot that they pop into to, like, refuel. So they, they, they have, like, their own slots. Function over form. Yeah, but the dwarves have, like, this obsession with making things look good. So, like, even, even though they are very keen on function, there's always going to be that guy that just over-designs it. Three legs are stable, too. Hmm. Thank you for the subscription. Uh, Vilks 
Hermanus. You should keep it some way. Well, okay, let's think about this first. Like, what if we can make them fit into a shape first? Like, their arms can fold up like that, maybe. So they're similar to the dwarves. Imagine two front legs and one back leg with two smaller arms of delicate work and one big arm if needed. The two small arms can work together as a big arm. Hmm. Make them crabs, yes. Crab. Ay, fuck. It scares the shit out of me every time. Festive Crusader. Thank you very much for the subscription. General Grievous. Yeah. We're gonna be stuck on this design phase for quite a while because I'm very indecisive when it comes to designs. Like, they don't come to me fast. Some of them do, but sometimes they really take a while. Um, like the dwarves. It took me four attempts to get the one I have, so... Um... Don't expect us to, like, finish this stream with, like, a finished design and be like, yep, we're happy with this. No, it, there's a very high chance that it just won't come out good. I feel like I need more, like, big industrial shapes, like this, you know, where it's just like a big old drum and, like, smaller pipes. And then the arms coming off of it. That fit the, uh, the if tube. This is getting very crowded. Hold on, I gotta combine all the uh, references into one layer first. Control E. There we go. Let's shrink that down so we have some more space. Hollow chests so they can store things they find. I think they would just have something on their back instead. But Hollow chest might be interesting. Let's... the crisp lines thank you um it's literally just a brush that has no uh pressure or uh opacity control the, the only thing is i i do i did set it so it has opacity control but only if i press hard enough it cuts directly to the biggest size so in case like i want to erase something it's easier to press hard but when i'm drawing it's just uh pressing light there's no need to like try changing thickness or anything, it just stays thick. Uh, uh, thank you for the subscription, uh, the Master Keeper. The golems will probably need lights. Yes, yes they would. 
avoid legs altogether. Yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking about the movement method, like how... I, I don't just want it to be legs, but like wheels also seem a little goofy. I know. Tentacles? Oh, like the Guardians from Zelda or the Incredibles movie, those robots. Yeah, that might be interesting, but I think I want more rigid shapes than 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 tentacles. What about like tracks, like a tank give or construction feel? Like a crab, they are great at moving through tight spaces. So okay. The 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 struggle with this is um because it's literally a robot, it's hard to keep it realistic or like keep it believable in the universe. Like if I go too far into these sorts of shapes with like curves and stuff like that it looks too futuristic so i have to do the thing like i did with the crawling tank where i i think i did strike a pretty good balance with these with the tank where it's like um it's a very weirdly futuristic like a strand beast is is weird but because of its like very rough metal square outer shell it grounds it enough in that world that it's like, it's like, okay, yeah, that's sort of medieval slash war military tank-esque, right? So, like, I feel like I need to do the same with the, um, with the golems, where even though it's a very weird futuristic premise, it has to be, like, in a very hard shell to help it not look like it stands out. So, like, maybe you want to go, like, really square. On who just, uh, who just did the thing? Uh, Mr. Such a Champ. Thank you very much. Laputa might be a good reference. Laputa? Uh, I'll look it up. Oh, you, you, oh, it is from, from the, uh, Castle in the Sky thing. Yeah, those are very round and soft shapes. But they did manage to make it look very... Hmm, how did they do that? Because it still looks like it fits with that ancient aesthetic somehow. I don't know how, though. Did the tank come before or after the golems? It came after the golems. Rom got a hold of one of the golems and picked it apart to figure out how its mechanics worked and then made a tank. Do a box and build around it, like Owl's Moving Castle? The robot from Laputa, okay, Castle in the Sky. Uh, basically, if it's after crabs, in a way they look mechanical enough, will still have that fantastical feel to them. Move the arms under the torso and have the legs on the sides. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm also not changing the silhouette enough of it. Like, we could push the idea more. You're right. So, like, the arms could be underneath the torso like this and then the legs on the side. Crab.
gonna be a crab with a beard? Because we want it to keep the beard, right? So is it gonna be a crab with a beard? Like that. And then we could have arms that can like reach onto its back and it would carry stuff on its back. Oh, I'm liking this actually. Crab might be the way to go. And then it could hold pretty, hold on. If we have grooves in the shell here, we could have the arms like go into the shell so they f are flush with it, right? Like that. And then the legs would just fold up into the side so it just turns into a little pie. <laughs> it turns into a little pie <laughs> with a beard. Otis approves beard as a light box. <laughs> A light box. What's a light box? Yeti crab. Ooh, Yeti crabs would be a good inspiration. We pushed our crab agenda. Yes, you succeeded. It makes them easy to store, too. You could stack. You could literally stack them. My god. This is stupid. How big are these things? So, like, okay, if, if we have a robot like this, I think the dwarves would be, like, that big. So they're pretty big. Oh, you could stack them. Uh, you could also put a face on the back as a reference to hiking. What? Hiking. What? Hikigani grabs? I. Ki. Hi. Hold on. Hikigani grabs. Ooh! What the fuck? What is that thing? Oh, he could have a face. Yeah, that would be a cool thing to have. Oh, you know what? Because the beard is here, we could have the nose be here and then like have eyes like that. That would be creepy though. <laughs> You have eyes there, and the nose there, and the beard. That is weird. This is the mother crab. Yeah, that would be interesting. Walking face. Local name. That is horrif- like, picture the eyes, so, okay. This is the face. And, I mean, it would have to look forward as well, so you would just see it, like, staring down on you. That is awful. Yeah, all humans turn to crabs, so eventually we will all become crabs. But yeah, I think that's we weird and freaky enough to pass. But I'm just thinking, okay, how, how does it look? You should try to design it so that you will see the see face and it will look be looking at you from any angle. Well, the, the easiest way to do that would just be to have the eye be a um, an indent 
So it would just be like the illusion, you know? Like you look at it from any direction and it would look like the the eye is looking at you like that. So from the side it would look like that with the nose. Could you incorporate the original arthropod dwarf concept? Oh, what what original? Less crab, more bug. Yeah, it would be. Hmm. How how can we do that? Maybe it's blind, but could still see through Earth, like Earth things in Avatar. Or you could have it have multiple faces if it's not functional eyes. Could freak ambush her out. Hmm. Let's think about this. Um, hold on. We gotta scrunch all this down. space maybe lobster vibes I think lobster would be too complex of a shape like I think we should stick with like one main body if we start having them be longer and stuff like that it will look too Like, what I'm think. okay, what if the legs and the arms are stuck to an outer ring that pivots around the body? So, you can have the face look any direction, but the legs would stay in place, and the arms would also stay in place. that and then maybe we have like a face in the front there the point you need to start looking at crab pictures Yes, I think at a certain point I will have to start looking at crab pictures, but I think also not looking at crab pictures, it's helping me not stick to a crab too much. If you want walking face, take a look at horseshoe crab. Oh yeah, horseshoe crabs. Uh, uh, these lovely luggers that are like that. The, the crabs holding on? You mean the, the shrimp? The...
seconds for a um, help. Oh, what about the demolition golem based off of a mantis shrimp? Ooh, that would be cool. I like what you're drawing now. Thank you. Um, could be like a forklift. screams in my mind won't stop of a guard golem that uses its head as a barricade like trapdoor to ants that is one thing that i've planned was um you're you're totally correct because the tunnels are perfectly circular and they're winding and stuff like that there would be defenses that are perfectly circular that just travel along pipes like sealing them off completely that would be golems with like legs around the edges to help them like move forward otis likes the idea of golem of of, of forklift golem yeah it's just i'm sort of stuck right now like i don't feel like anything fits right with or it doesn't push anything too far. I, ah, uh, Sam Zuchkov, thank you for the uh, subscription. I feel like it, it, it doesn't go far enough in the direction I need it to. Dad took my iPad, so I'm forced to play with my mom's phone. Well, okay. I have an idea to reuse the legs on the side of the torso. To freeze the legs of the side of the torso golem could be given a ranged weapon that defends the construction golems, maybe? I mean, they're not full. The, the, the dwarves aren't the offensive ones. Like, they make weapons for other people, but they're not being attacked by anyone. So they wouldn't, they they would have defensive things like like sealing off the tunnels, but not to the point where they have, like, war golems. They only design war golems for Barus, who sends them out to war. I guess they would have war golems. They just wouldn't use them for themselves. Are you gonna redesign gnomes? I think so. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm I'm looking more at the main big races like elves, orcs, dwarves first um and then i'm going maybe into the niche ones but no guarantee
Maybe we should go more with like a pottery look. Like more molded forms. Instead of it maybe being all made of metal, there are shells that are clay. You know? So we can have more of like a shapely look to everything. Giants? Uh, I have done giants. I, I don't know if I'm happy with it, but I have touched on giants before. Uh, these are called crag giants. Uh, these things. Mm. As you can see, when it comes to my designs, I tend to move towards big nose. And it, I, I, I like the nose idea. Like, it always... I, I like noses in designs, because there's so much potential for goofy nose stuff. You know? I was thinking they would, like, bathe in clay so they can, like, lather themselves and, like, basically create, like, a hard outer shell. Can be improved, I think. Yes, indeed, it can be improved. Yeah. It was from a while ago. Have you seen Troll Hunter? Yes, yes, I have. Um, I like it. Yeah, Troll Hunter was a good movie. Could be pretty neat. They could use water to filter out gems and rocks. Oh yeah, they could. Hmm. Let's see. Hold on. I'm completely lost. One time I drew giants a few years back and I basically made them big six-armed monkeys and lizards. I think it was a good idea, just not executed well since I was only like 13. Hmm. It, it... That seems interesting. I... Yeah, I, I need to look a lot more into the background of, like, um, giants and elves and such to, like, get a good idea of what I want to take from those. These are starting to lose me. I, I don't like this that much.
what do you think about the correlation between races like a middle ground between elves and dwarves or gnomes kind of way of thinking are you going to use this uh are you going to use this your designs i'm i don't think i'm going to use that sort of thing cuz i don't think it makes sense that um like if if i push the design of each of the races into their own literal creature right it's not like a variation of human the dwarves are literally a different creature that looks humanoid it would be weird to have like a half orc or something because the orcs would be nothing even close to the humans so to have something in between those two seems uh i i don't know it i i, I don't think i'd want that the same upside down as it is right side up so if you flip it then it can just scuttle away hmm told you I'm not good with mechanical designs. This is definitely showing my weakness is um like nothing good is coming out. But at least we're having fun designing stuff. Like that maybe? Where it can go both up and down. But it doesn't feel like something a dwarf would do. I don't know. Hmm. Watered down European culture with different ears and non Europeans when the author wants to show evil race, so I appreciate what you are doing. Yeah, I, I, like I said in the video, there's nothing wrong with that kind of design where it's just human but different flavor because it, it allows for creativity in other things, you know, you can focus more on the clothing and, and, and stuff like that because it's just humans. Um, so we can like relate to them easier as well. Like for example, in a D and D setting, if we if if you did push the playable races in design wise, it would be hard to balance them, because well, how the fuck, like you the the dwarves have metal skin, they don't wear clothing, and they speak a different language. Like you wouldn't be able to make that a playable character. If I made dwarves, uh, how I designed elves, where they're tall as hell. I'm gonna redesign them again, but they're like tall as hell and they're tree people. Like, you wouldn't be able to play that race. Because it's so far outside of the scope of what would make sense to be playable and still balanced. Wanted to draw a person with four arms, but where I put. Uh. Where I put the shoulders. Hmm. Oh, like four arms on the same set of shoulders? Like, like one shoulder and then it separates out into two arms? That could be interesting. I once drew a character with multiple arms. It was a wrestler. I was, um, I was very much into, or getting invested in a certain wrestler that was famous. I, I forgot his name. His name was Agrelli. Ag I, I forgot. He was the, 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 the guy with the PhD in suplexing who literally just lost two rounds in his whole career. Um, and both of them to one point. You know, I the the experiment was his was his nickname because people like believed that no man could be built like that. Like he was some sort of Russian experiment that just came out to be perfectly designed to wrestle. Ah, there it is. This guy is what I drew, like multiple arms. I was just thinking about like, okay, what if like a wrestler had multiple arms? Like how would they be able to like subdue people or, or, or tackle them and stuff like that? And it's it's a mix of a few cultures. I was thinking that it'd be a mix of traditional like, like um, traditional uh, Olymp Olympic wrestling, but then also some a sumo influence as well with like the deep cultures and stuff like that and also some like Indian um, 
clay or dirt wrestling, I forgot what it's called. The one where they like put um, red clay on themselves to make the grip better, right? So like he would have like red clay on his skin and stuff like that. Uh, I decide to make a Ben 10, <laughs> it is very Ben 10. I decide to make all different species extremely different and make the reskinned human types into just that human variety. These gods t touched are human imbued with by the influences of various gods. Oh, I see. That is very cool. I write TTRPGs and it can be done quite often, actually. It's just the D&D design on races perpetuates many uh, authors' thinking. I see. Player, it's hard to pitch some original idea to players who just want to play as what they know from pop culture media. True, that is true. Like it, it's it's not my fault. Tieflings are cool. Okay, I just want to be a, a red guy with horns. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, uh, but in one campaign I did play. We we were all playing witches. Um. And and it was very fun in that campaign because the designs could be pushed quite far. Uh, we sort of like homebrewed the the witch ideas, so and and their physical form would like look weird as well. So I had a character called Gertrude, who was the witch of cooking. She would like ingest things and then spew out soups um, from her from her mouth. Hold on, let me let me show you that. Where did I put that? Was it in D and D? Yes, yes, it was. There, Boiler Witch. This is Gertrude, the the wonderful lady. I played her very sweetly, though. She has some, you know, she had um, auntie energy or, or or sweet grandma, like just it just makes you a batch of cookies, but they taste amazing. Just don't ask what's in them. That's the only thing. You know? It was very fun playing with her, but sadly that campaign is now retired. Yeah. Gertrude. Gertrude's a sweet gal. Um, you in the game you could like get negative modifiers for more benefits. So I I rolled really high on attractiveness. I rolled like a nine out of ten. So she was hot as hell. And I was like, it doesn't fit my idea of Gertrude, so I took the negative modifier that gave her an attractiveness of one and and got benefits, but, you know, then I, I, I could finally draw her as the beautiful, beautiful, blobular, <laughs> uh, lovely lady that she is. Auntie Whispers type beat, I like it. But yeah, I'm really stuck on the golems. I feel like we should... Or I should do more research into the background of them. Stay silent, stay still comment? Let me search that up. But for a first stream, I think it did went well. It did go well, this first stream. How long has it been? It's been three hours already, damn, and we have done nothing. <laughs> three hours for nothing. Stay silent, stay still. Ooh, the art looks really nice. I like it. The art looks really nice. What is it about? Bakugan? Yeah, it, uh, the, the, the dwarf are kind of like Bakugan. Like, they roll out, and then they, they, uh... They sense metal on the floor and then they pop out. They have a metal base. They have a metal in their ass. And they just... Smooth box. Take a stretch break. Bear. I think the stream is going to end soon. I'm sorry that it didn't have that much, like, finished drawing. Um, I don't know if any of you were expecting me to be more productive on streams than this. This is sort of how streams go, but also I am very rusty. 
do some TikTok dances. Uh, no. No. SSSS is about exploring a post-apocalyptic Scandinavia where the horror aspect were somewhat romanticized as fairy tale creatures at least in name convention. Oh, nice. Whenever I need design ideas, I just scroll through kill six billion demons yet again. Is that like another comic? Uh, maybe like the lolling droids from Star Wars? A sci-fi Nordic fantasy after the world went haywire. No, this is fun. Okay, thanks. I, I, I'm glad you guys like that. We got Otis out of this. I'm happy. Okay, look, off stream, I'm gonna sketch Otis. Or you know what? Let's let's draw Otis. the The golems aren't going anywhere. I I will be thinking about them off stream, because I I really can't do it on stream. Apparently, I I need more time just to be quiet and like just look through some resources and get ideas. Um. But let's draw Otis. It's nice now that I have the uh, the sheet for the dwarves, because I can just pull it up and have a reference for what the dwarves look like. So, there you go. So, what is Otis? I'm Well, he's a dwarf, but... What what is his character? Are are we saying he is a he's a madman? He's out of his mind. What your first design reminds me of the false conductor from Infinity Train. Oh, I I wanted to watch Infinity Train because I heard some things about it. Um, one of my teachers recommended it to me. Uh, used to teachers a long time ago. Infinity train. I never actually looked at it. I've only heard of it. Hold on. False conductor. Oh. That looks interesting. Out of topic, but I love the frame he uses on the streams, especially the golden frog thing on the right corner. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, that thing is called the Grob Gobbler. Um, we used to, so when I used to stream on Twitch, uh, the, the channel points were called the Grobs. Um, they're these golden coins with teeth on them. They're what is in my logo. That's a Grob. Um, it's the currency we have. So then we developed this, this creature that would gobble up your grobs. Like, this is actually, we, we thought that the coins in the world would look like this. Yes, surprisingly, the, the thing on the right has lore, the thing on the left doesn't have anything. But this is a grob, and, and the grob gobbler steals your grobs. He's like a, he's like a piggy bank. Um, and I did a, a piece of art as a commission for someone once of the Grob Gobbler inside a bank. We did like a sketch on stream and then I drew this, which is like the Grob Gobbler in his little, little bank, <laughs> just enjoying his wealth, enjoying his money. Grab Gobbler's cute. Here. There are some cute designs in the world. Um, like the, uh, the, these guys as well. Uh, these guys are forest spirits. They're basically like those little ghosts from Princess Mononoke, right? But they're potatoes. <laughs> I, I, I designed them once when I had some inspiration from like folklore and stuff like that. And uh, they're called um, 
what, what were they called? Uh, Mary Berries or something? And they're these little buggers who just like cause mischief and go around the swamps. Like they're around swamps and stuff. And they would swallow things that are like foreign objects and stuff like that to like throw them out of the forest. Like they would keep it clean. But the thing is, they also don't like sometimes you can trade with them. So like if you find one of them, you could give them seeds and and sticks and stuff like that, and they would give you their trash. But sometimes the trash that they pick up could be valuable stuff. They could just spit out gold rings and coins and and pieces from people that have died in the forest, and they just give it to you. And I was thinking that they would be like cartoonish in a way where their mouth can like stretch open and they have like a like a pocket inside them that that is like a different dimension a sort of different dimension so they can eat things that are way bigger than themselves do they scream well of course they do <laughs> that's why they 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 sort of they they don't really scream <laughs> yes okay they do scream Potato Magnus. Recommend any similar design focused artist channels that inspire you or you learn from? Um, one channel that I really love when it comes to just their spontaneous nature of like having ideas and just doing it is Miscast. Uh, Miscast. They don't do, well, they do basically everything. They do drawing, um, they, they focus mostly on miniatures. Uh, Miscast. Miss. Cast. This is great. I, 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 I love his content. Moss and a sapling on it. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's draw Otis. So Otis is chill. He, he's a cool guy. I feel like it would be fun to have him like. Okay, this might be a little cruel, but have him have like a missing arm. Um, cause he's, he's, he's a bit crazy, you know, he might have gotten into an accident or two, uh, lost his arm, maybe has like a, 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 a robot arm instead. Chill, but a whack job. <laughs> miscast is very good. Yes, yes, I love Miscast. Looking into the void and lost himself. Otis doesn't have all the m moomins in the valley. The guy on the left looks like he'd just follow you through the woods yelling and they're singing loudly. Otis the cyberpunk. Yes, robot arm. Okay, hold on. And his beard is very nice, though. He has a very nice beard. Let's see what we can do with the beard. I was thinking some sort of braided look. But the edges are singed off. <laughs> uh, this, this part is very burnt. There are no female and male dwarfs. They don't reproduce or anything, so all of them are just... Dwarves. <laughs> That's it. Brave Brain had a very messed up thought earlier regarding the lore of the dwarves. I don't know how they die, but could other races, like, use their metal skin for stuff? You could! <laughs> there is nothing stopping you from skinning a dwarf and using the metal to do stuff with, um, which would probably put you on a list of, their gender is dwarf, like, that's what they are. <laughs> yeah, hold on, let me, this arm is gone, so he'll just have, like, I don't think he will have like a 
like a golem arm. It's just gonna be like a weird claw thing. There you go. Like that. He just has that. You know? And if he needs something holding this, he'll just fucking tape it to the thing. <laughs> he'll just put it, wrap it up. Be like, there you go. That's all I need. W D W or Arf. <laughs> Otis is the barkeeper. Sorry if that was a weird question. No worries, that was not a weird question. Um, then there's Otis. That is, he, he is his own gender. Or Otis is just Otis. What's your gender? Otis. Where you come from? Otis. <laughs> what's, what's your goal? Mm. Just scratches his beard with the, with the prosthetic. Mm. Otis. Hold on, he's chill as fuck though, hold on. Let me give him like a pipe. He's he's smoking. He's he's just fucking He's living life. Uh their fingers go in opposite directions, by the way, so they basically have two thumbs. Like that. But they can, like, flip them around as well, so they can... It, it, it... I, I hope it makes sense. Yeah. There you go. Just poofing clouds. Big old beard. Also tied at the bottom with like more braids. He has the biggest beard out of all the dwarves. Is obviously Otis. Big beard energy. His other leg is like out to the side like this. He's chilling. There you go. Otis design. Um, pronounce Otis. That was a Discord link. Way far ahead. Oh, sorry. What did I miss? Hook type prosthetic hands are actually the most practical option. Yeah, yeah. That's why I drew it. I, I have seen some of those. No brain, only Otis. <laughs> Dwarf. Osuari would be cool. What is an osuary? A giant memorial made of the metal of their bodies. Ooh, that would be cool. I can't see the older messages to the text. Hold on, I can just send in the, uh, the, uh, what are you talking about? A Discord link? Is it the Discord link? I can send it in again. Hold on. Just a sec. There you go. Discord link. Here, big old beard. And then he has like grass growing on him, which looks like hair. Like he's a bit fuzzy. And then he has, what, what's the stuff growing out of his head? Like a dandelion or something?
Oh, you know what it should be? A, a four-leaf clover. That's what it should be. He's a lucky bastard. What was that? Oh, thank you for the follow on Twitch. Somebody, uh, Latella, thank you for the follow on Twitch. Um, that's my notification for the follow on Twitch. I used to, um, one time we did a, uh, a draw pile together where, like, everybody can draw on one canvas, and I did that with the people in the stream. And we drew this character that you just saw screaming with the alert sound. We drew that guy, and he sort of came the mascot for a little bit. Uh, his name was Bert. So his the the alert was well Bert alert. I'm everywhere. I can be. What? W one leaf is obviously taped onto his tool, <laughs> bro. He's. Hold on, um, we, we gotta give him, like, the, the patterns on the arms. Otis is chilling. There you go. And they have like these these pipes. Like, you know, the um I, I still want to like redesign them so they're not just exactly the Indian pipe things, but for now it's all I got. No, they smoke these things. Yeah. And then they have shot glasses that are like um that are like smoking pipes. So their their glasses that they drink out of have like these little legs and then they have a pipe going out of the bottom which is like a straw like that. So you would put in liquid and then you would just like sip it up one go. There you go. There's a man Otis. I think he has some like grass on the top of his eyes that look like eyebrows <laughs> like that as well and then hold on let me Otis is bawling out because he got like precious gems in his prosthetic Okay, there you go. Let me color him in real quick. He's a bit rusty too, like compared to the others. I think he'll be more orange. Oh, hold on, I got a fill in brush. Um, some dwarves drink so much they get what? Uh. Some dwarves drink so much they get desensitized to it. These dwarves grow grot. 
on their head and smoke it because that's the real good stuff. Otis knows what you did. Otis works as a front of Dwarf Casino. Jesus Christ. In Wastone, there was Otis. Not too bright, the rocks were trees. Thought rocks were trees. Oh, what a sight, he'd shout. Save the rocks, keep them intact. Oops, confused again. Rocks don't grow. Dun That's a f What the fuck? <laughs> what is- I, I probably butchered that. Hold on. In whose stone, there was Otis. Not too bright. Thought rock was trees. Oh, what a sight, he'd shout. Save the rocks, keep them intact. Oops, confused again. Rocks don't grow, that's a fact. <laughs> I love it. I plan to become your server, Otis. Oh, wonderful, thank you. I'm just imagining an insectoid uh, Fafnir dragon now because of these dwarves, and I really enjoy that thought, so thanks for putting that in my head. You're welcome. I don't think these guys would actually turn into dragons, but that would have been a really cool idea. Someone put that in the comments, I think, where they're like, oh, I, I wish it was like a dwarf that is like a larva, and then they pupate into dragons. Uh, derived from Otis, 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 Rock, Otis, Otis, Rock. Crisis, Otis, Shout. Jesus, yay, Otis. I feel like Otis would try to connect legs to that thing so he could smoke anything he wants. Like a fucking smoke golem. The urge to make them a merchant, craftsman, NPC in my current campaign. There's nothing wrong with you doing that. You are welcome to. And you can take the art if you'd like. I don't care. Uh, just ask for permission or tell me how it goes. And that's all I want, honestly. Uh, people have asked for permission to like use my concepts before. And I'm just like, yeah, fuck yeah. I, the only thing I tell them is just please tell me how it goes. Because I would love to know what happened. Um, that's always the important bit to me. I like D&D &D stories. I like what happens in D&D. &D. Um, uh, he holds the smoke thing top of his head. On top of his head? No. <laughs> Let's keep it in front of him for now. There you go, and now we can color him, which we'll do nice and quick. And then that'll be the end of the stream. Control. I can't see anything. Control H. There you go. Let's color in those bits. And There's like some on his beard too. Okay, dark beard. Then I remembered that I made the edges of the limbs darker. Oh, 
Oh, whoops, I just missed a lot of messages because it, like, got stuck at the top. Otis ate the dog again. Hi, uh, your dwarf video uh, appeared in my recommendations out of nowhere. Not usually my thing, but this is quite cool. Thank you. Uh, Unjit. Uh, one of my friends who plays tiefling artificers with eyeglasses were made into her horns. Uh, which are in the front of her face. Oh, that's cool. That is really cool. How old is Otis? Otis is Otis old. He's Otis years old. Uh, okay, let's see. Gotta put the rust in the nooks. He's a rusty boy. Like that. And then let's get like a darker purple. Otis is known to have one of the most glorious beards in the uh, Dwarven Kingdom. Okay. There. Highlights in the eyes. Let's make his nice prosthetic. I think it would be made out of copper. Sort of coppery looking. Let's give it a nice copper. No, that's not dark enough. Just wait, you'll know what I'm doing. There we 
we go. Brighter. Really dark line is back there, back there, and then bright as hell highlights. There we go, and now we do the uh. Nice rubies. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. We got nice little rubies in there, you know? Darker. And then highlight. There you go. Look at that. He's fucking bowling. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful prosthetic. Otis H. Shaggy? I'm loving Otis so much that we're in Stooges. He's immaculate. Hive of Otis, you might judge me smoking my weak human weed, but I bet he would have incredible wisdom to share if we both get zoned. <laughs> Otis does the Otis can. Otis purchases many Otis. <laughs> there you go. I love his arm. His arm is just so fucking fancy. It's, it was so unnecessary. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm sorry, it is not unnecessary, it is Otis. Otis only buys and makes necessary things. Out of an infinite number of Otises, he is the best and most bulbous Otis. Okay, now let's uh, uncrop so I can finally color in that flower. Or that green leaf clover. Four leaf clover. There we go. Brighter green thing. I think we are done. Otis, the man himself. He's done. Let's put a shadow under him so we can like ground him on the floor a little bit more. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that stream. We ended off with something that we didn't plan to do at all. Uh, the, go the golems, which were the main goal, didn't go anywhere, but at least we got Otis. And that is all that matters. We got Otis, and Otis has us. I'm gonna post this on Twitter afterwards, but I hope you enjoyed the stream, and maybe I'll spontaneously do one 
some day in the future, but um, I'm sorry for anyone who was expecting me to actually be productive in the stream. It barely happens. It ever. It never happens. Uh, thank you all for joining in, by the way. I really appreciate it. I haven't done a stream in a while, and to have this many people this active in the chat, it it it's it's very heartwarming. So take care, everyone, and uh, just watch out for the next.